Yo, what is good, Knicks fans? You're watching New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. We have some Donovan Mitchell rumors to get to. Also, some rumors about Derrick Rose. Do the Knicks not want to include Derrick Rose in a Donovan Mitchell trade? We're going to break all that down in today's show. But I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Mint Mobile, a cell phone provider that's hooking you up with plans, with unlimited talk, unlimited text for as low as $15 per month. Trust me, you're not going to find a better deal out there. Just go to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. Get started today. I'll put the link to that in the comments and description of today's show. As we let the audience build up and everyone find their seats, I want to start the show with this question because there's been a lot of rumors about Quentin Grimes and Obi Toppin and Donovan Mitchell and which one of these guys you would have to include in a trade. For Donovan Mitchell, but I want to ask all the people that are tuned in right now, if you had to pick one of these guys to keep in a Donovan Mitchell trade, which one would it be? Type six for Quentin Grimes, type one for OB Toppin. I'll give shout outs to everybody that answers this. You know, Monday I woke up and I wanted to keep OB Toppin. Tuesday I woke up and I wanted to keep Quentin Grimes. Wednesday, I didn't know which one. But I do know this. I will not include both of these guys in a trade for Donovan Mitchell. I won't do it. You can have one of these guys, whether it be Grimes or Toppin, but I am not going to give you both in a Donovan Mitchell trade. Let's give some shout-outs to the people that are answering these questions. The chat, <laughs> it is already going crazy. Nick's Galaxy's in the house. Shout-out to you, bro. Jet Life, Francisco, Artuo, Keith. Greg, 729, Sheldon, Quiet, Mike, The Truth, Joseph, Trapstar, Dot, Austin Young, Keyshawn. Shout out to everybody joining the show. Let me know, if you could only pick one of these guys, Obi Toppin or Quentin Grimes, which one would you keep in a Donovan Mitchell trade? Type one for Obi, type six for Quentin Grimes. Tom, he's rocking with Quentin, and I can't, I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at anybody the way anyone feels about this. I see the arguments for both sides. For Quentin Grimes, he's a three and D wing that can play the two or the three. He's a good defender. He can shoot the three. Those type of players, you're always looking for him, and you want those players on your roster. Obi Toppin, he's young. He was a first-round pick of the Knicks, the first pick by Leon Rose. He just scored 40 last year as the season ended. He continued to get better every single game. When he got the minutes, he produced. So I understand. I mean, Obi could be the perfect power forward alongside Brunson, Barrett, and Donovan Mitchell. I get both sides. But I'm asking you guys the tough questions. Angel says one. Juan says one. J. Sid, Obi. Austin's rocking with Obi. So is Joseph. Lance is rolling with Grimes. T.S. is with Obi. Jose is with Quentin. Steven says Obi so we can get Randall out of here. Eddie says Obi. Scribe Lur says no more moves this season. I do agree that if there is no Don and Mitchell trade, I do not think the Knicks will make another move. The roster is set. They're already 13 deep. Maybe they, you know, get signing a guy like Ferran Hunt or Jeffries from the Summer League team to get to 15 players. But I do not think that a notable player will be signed by the Knicks. Someone says dope-ass hoodie in the chat. Shout out to you, bro. That's what's up. Let's ride. Knicks fans, let's do it. Let's do this because we do it on every single show. I want you guys to name a random Knicks player in the chat for me. One second, I got to... Got to hop below the desk real quick. But let me know, a random player that once played for the New York Knicks, give me someone. I thought of someone today. What about Ronnie Turioff? Remember that name? Remember him playing with the New York Knicks? Yeah, that is the definition of a random Knicks player. Scribe, he says Alonzo Trier. Knicks Galaxy says John Starks. I wouldn't say he's all that random. Chris Childs from The Truth. The X-Man from Artuo, Trier from Greg, Catino Mobley. That is a random Nick. Pablo Prigioni from Greg. We're, we're, we're naming random Nicks in the comments right now. Landry Fields from 729. Ray Felton from Joseph. Steve Novak from Danny. Chris Copeland from Keyshawn. Ron Baker. He was, he was, a, he was a random Nick. Quentin Richardson. That's a guy... 
that we don't talk about enough. I actually watched Like Mike the other day, and it reminded me of Quentin Richardson when he used to hit three balls and go down the court like that. Clay Anthony Early from Soldier Slim. That is a random. Nick, Anthony Randolph. I had a lot of high hopes for a guy like Anthony Randolph when he came over in that trade. Thing is, it just did not actually work out for a guy like Anthony Randolph. He had all the potential in the world, but sometimes that doesn't matter. What about Rashid Wallace? What about Ron Artest? There's a lot of random Knicks out there. You guys love playing this game. I love playing it. And we'll end this one with the last one from Jack, Tracy McGrady. Yeah, he actually played for the New York Knicks at one time. That was a pretty fun experiment. 158 people live, 17 likes. Where are my real ones at? Let's hit a real one roll call. If you know, you know. Drop a real one in the comment section, and I'll give a shout out to everyone that does. We've been doing this a lot on the channel. We've actually got a t-shirt for all of the real ones out there that you guys can get. Check out the chat box. It's right there. It's an official New York Knicks Now real one t-shirt. Soldier Slim, my guy, is in the chat. Knicks Galaxy, Trap Star, Joseph, Clutch, Artuo, Greg, Quiet Money, Alfonso, William, the real ones are piling in. 156 people live watching, 200, uh, 27 likes. If you haven't yet, hit that like button. Show some love for the fellas over here at Chat Sports grinding to get you guys a show. The more likes we get, the more Knicks fans are going to tune in. Where are my real ones at? Drop a real one in the comment section. Alfonso, Peter, Manny, Jay. I appreciate all the real ones finding their seat for today's show. I also want to know where all you guys are watching from. Shout out your city in the comment section for me. It's one of my favorite things about chat sports and especially New York Knicks now. We are all over the globe as Knicks fans from coast to coast, ocean to ocean, continent to continent. Wherever there is a body of land and water, Knicks fans are going to be there. Best fans in the freaking world, no doubt about it. Greg's rocking from Long Island. Alfredo from Florida. TS from Babylon. Puerto Rico from Juan. Long Island from Seb. Soldier Slim. East Flatbush, Brooklyn. Clutch Kicks from Alabama. New Jersey from Knicks Galaxy. Alfredo from Hoboken. Louisiana from Keith. Jacksonville from Manny. New York from Steven, James is from Brooklyn, Joseph from Highbridge, New Haven from William, East Flatbush from Soldier Slim, Tennessee from Dejara, South London from Jack, Brooklyn but not a not, but not a Nets fan from Quiet Money, Jamal from the Bronx. Did you go to the pro am game? Did you see Julius Randle and everybody? Not win in a prom game? Pretty embarrassing. Caesar, did I skip you? I'm sorry, my guy. Pooh from New York. I love it. Atlanta from Warren. Mike's from Miami. And Sheldon is rocking from Brooklyn. As always, we're going to have a super chat menu for you guys because you guys love to see this show turn into a party. And if we want that to happen again today, we can get it rolling. Every super chat equals a shout out. We'll get you up on screen. If you have a question, go ahead and ask it. Every $10 super chat, I will take a fireball shot. Every $100 in super chats in total, four fireball shots for the gang. Me, Patrick Seatman, and Matthew Peterson are all in the studio. And every 100 likes equals a fireball shot. We're at 38 likes, 160 people watching. I'm thirsty. I'm ready for a shot before the show. Hit that like button if you haven't. And I want to show love to the Super Chat Ring of Honor members, all of the real ones out there that have made big-time donations on New York Knicks now the past couple of weeks. Jason B. has just been letting it fly. Two $70 Super Chats from Jason, as well as a 50 ball. Chris F. them. I know I'm probably saying your last name wrong, but I think it is way cooler if your last name is F them. And he as well, just like Jason B, has been showing mad love to Knicks now. 250 balls from Chris. Charlie Neek joined the party as well two weeks ago. $250 super chats from him. 
Mr. Reds dropped in a 25er. Gritty Guapo, a real one. I hope he joins the chat today. He dropped a 25. And my guy, Nick's Galaxy, who's in the chat, dropped a $25 super chat. After every live show, I'm going to update these. I'm going to count the numbers. I'm going to go through the analytics. And I will always show off the top 10 super chats in New York Knicks Now history. If you want to join the list, be a big dog like Jason, Chris, Charlie, Mr. Reg, Gritty Guapo, and my guy, Nick's Galaxy. We do have two mailbags to get to on today's show where I'll be answering all of your guys' questions. All you got to do is use hashtag Nick's in the comment section. When you do that, the questions, they'll enter our software and it'll make life for my producer, Ma uh, I almost said Matthew Peterson, like it's just a habit. It's not Matthew Peterson anymore. He's too big time for me. It is Patrick Seatman today. You've seen him on the show. We just, at the end of the show, like to post up and talk Knicks. But if you have a question, use hashtag Knicks in the comment section. I really want to answer all your questions. Every super chat gets up on screen. And when you super chat, you get to skip the line. Also, if you haven't yet, give me a follow over on Twitter. Today's goal of the show is to get to 12,000 subscribers and 2,000 followers on Twitter. I'm 150 followers away, but I'm not going to doubt the Knicks fans out there, especially the real ones that tune into New York Knicks now every single day. If you want to follow someone on Twitter that tweets about the Knicks all day, every day, give me a follow at Marshall Green. Underscore the link to that is in the comment section, and we're going to continue the same theme. If you follow me from today's show, I will give you a follow back, and before we bounce on out of here in about an hour, Hour and a half, two hours, three hours, however long you guys want to go. I will give everybody that followed me a shout out before we head home. But if you're ready for the show, if you're ready to hear about the latest reports on Donovan Mitchell and Derek Rose and R.J. Barrett and the latest New York Knicks news and rumors, I want you to hit that like button. 176 people watching, 52 likes. Every time we get to 100 likes on a video, we're going to take a shot, and I'd like to take a shot. I know Petey is over there telling me he wants to take a shot. Let's do it. I see some people getting their questions in. Shout out to Manny. Shout out to David. Follow suit like them. If you have a question that you want answered on today's show, use hashtag Nick's in the comments section. I'm going to open up my drink of the day real quick so I can uh, get ready to speak for about two hours. Let's do it. Let's do, uh, I don't even remember what I scripted. Just go, just go generic, and then I'll push you to that, just so I can kind of introduce the show. I don't even remember what the sponsor for this is supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be Mint Mobile. Hold on. It is. So, If you have a question, use hashtag Knicks. I see the chat is already popping off. That's what we love to see. Knicks fans getting after it in the chat. Let me check out, see what this chat's looking like. 195 people watching, 60 likes, getting kind of everything set up on this end. We got two mailbags coming up where I will answer your guys' questions. Hashtag Knicks in the comment section. That can do that. 60 likes, 196 people watching. Those are rookie numbers. Hit that like button. Every 100 likes we get to in today's show, we will take some shots as a crew. We're going to get into the latest round down in Mitchell, Derek Rose, RJ Barrett. People are still finding their seats. That's cool. I am ready. Uh, Seeps, are we ready on your end? All right, let's do it. Let's get into the latest Knicks news and rumors right about now. Welcome into New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. In today's show, we're going to touch on the latest Donovan Mitchell rumors. We got some on Derrick Rose. And at the end of the show, we'll touch on R.J. Barrett and where Hoops Hype has him ranked as a small forward across the NBA. But first, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Mint Mobile, a cell phone provider that's hooking you up with cell phone plans for as low as $15 per month that include unlimited talk, unlimited text on the nation's largest 5G network. No reason not to switch over. Do it today. 
Go to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. Let's start today's show, though, with talking about Derrick Rose. And according to Tony Jones, who hopped on a Hoops Hype podcast with Michael Scotto, he said that the Knicks want to keep Derrick Rose in a Donovan Mitchell trade. And he also said the Jazz are interested in a guy like Derrick Rose. And that makes a lot of sense because the Jazz, they want players that aren't expiring deals. And that's what Derrick Rose is on. He's on a two-year deal worth about $28 million, but there is a team option. So it is essentially an expiring deal worth up to $14 million. This was the exact quote from Tony Jones on that Scotto Hoops Hype podcast. He said the Knicks don't want to unload Derrick Rose. He's long been a favorite of Tom Thibodeau. I know the Knicks want to hang on to him and Quentin Grimes. Those guys are priorities. And we've talked about it on the show the past couple of days that the Knicks want to hold on to a guy like Quentin Grimes in a trade for Donovan Mitchell. We know that for a fact that's come from multiple people. But I think this is a new report and something that is very interesting, that the Knicks are not interested, including uh, Derrick Rose, in a trade for Donovan Mitchell. And I don't really agree with this type of logic. Let's first look at some stats on Derrick Rose since he came over to the New York Knicks. And I'll kind of break down what I think about Derrick Rose not being available in a trade in a second. But let's talk about the player that he is first. He was great when he came to the Knicks in 2021. Probably one of the best deals that Leon Rose has made as the head, head, the head honcho of the New York Knicks, trading a second round pick in Dennis Smith Jr. for Derrick Rose. And Derrick Rose was the catalyst for the Knicks in 2021, down the home stretch, getting them into the playoffs, getting the four seed, getting a home playoff series. 15 points per game, four assists. 48% from the deck, 41% from three, but the injuries caught up to him this season. Just played in 26 games. The points and the averages and the efficiency stayed the same. He just wasn't all that available, and that's kind of been a recurring theme through Derrick Rose's career. He's a year older next year, and can we depend on him to play 82 games? I do know that if we get to the playoffs, we can depend on Derrick Rose to be a primetime player because that's what he is, and that's what he was for the New York Knicks back in the 2021 playoffs against the Atlanta Hawks when he was entrusted into the starting lineup. Almost 20 points per game in five games against the Hawks. Five assists was very efficient, 47-plus percent from the field and 47% from downtown. Derrick Rose is great. The thing is, he his timeline, in my opinion, doesn't really match with the Knicks that well. What is Derrick Rose, 34, 35 years old? He's going to continue to get older. That's just how life works. And his body is unfortunately going to continue to break down. Uh, Mother Nature, unfortunately, is undefeated in that department. I want to ask you guys this, though. Would you include Derrick Rose in a Donovan Mitchell trade? If Danny Ainge called you and said, the only way we're making a trade for Donovan Mitchell to go from Salt Lake City to Madison Square Garden, as if Derrick Rose is involved, would you do it? Take the seat of Leon Rose. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Let me know what you think. I wouldn't, I'm not happy about trading a guy like Derrick Rose. I like him. I like the person. I like the player. I think he brings a lot to this team. But keeping Derrick Rose or not trading Derrick Rose is not a holdup for me. He's, in a, he's a 35-year-old point guard, played in just 26 games last year. He's closer to the end of his career than the prime of his career. And why would he be a holdup in a Donovan Mitchell trade? It's because Tom Thibodeau loves Derrick Rose. We know that for a fact. But Derrick Rose fits what the Utah Jazz want. They want expiring contracts and that's what Derrick Rose is on he's on a two-year 28 million dollar deal with a team option so if the team declines it he then becomes an expiring contract one year worth 14 million dollars for a team like Utah that's rebuilding that's retooling and ready to hit that reset button being able to come off 14 million dollars next year in free agency is a big win for a guy like Danny Ainge in a trade for Donovan Mitchell that's why they want Derrick Rose but I think it's important that Knicks fans and Leon Rose and Tom Thibodeau, remember this. You cannot mix emotions with business. Business is business. It's strictly financial. I love Derrick Rose. You love Derrick Rose. Tom Thibodeau, he loves Derrick Rose. But Derrick Rose cannot be the holdup on a deal for Donovan Mitchell. Say that out loud. 
No, we don't want to give you Derrick Rose. That's going to be the thing that's going to prevent us from getting Donovan Mitchell. That's a crazy line of thinking, and I'm not in that sort of business. I love D. Rose, but I would ship his ass to Salt Lake City in a New York minute for Donovan Mitchell to end up with the New York Knicks. And it would be a great move for a guy like Derrick Rose because he would be bought out by the Utah Jazz and be able to sign anywhere he wants in free agency and go latch on with a contender. I love Derrick Rose, and I think trading him kind of does him a little bit of a good service because he gets to go sign anywhere and compete for an NBA championship. Look, I don't know if Derrick Rose is going to be in the deal. I don't know who's going to be in the deal. We talk about what's reported, and we put out videos every single day here on the latest New York Knicks news and rumors. So if you're looking for videos every single day, hit that big red button. Subscribe to New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports because we are only starting what we're going to be here on this channel in the coming future. Get in on the bandwagon because soon it's going to be full and we're not going to be taking anybody else. But seriously, if you love the Knicks and you're looking for a one-stop shop on YouTube or your spot, hit that big red button. We told you also about Mint Mobile off the top of today's show, but let's tell you now why you should switch over. Cell phone plans for as low as $15 per month. $15 per month. Unlimited talk. Unlimited text. Service on the nation's largest 5G network. And the best part, it's easy to switch over. You get to keep your same phone. You get to keep your same phone number. You don't got to go to the store. You can switch over from the comfortability of your house. Get started today. Go to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. I'll put the link to that in the comments and description of today's show. The second report that came from Tony Jones when he was on that podcast with Michael Scotto of Hoops Hype, he reported that the Jazz are willing to hold on to Donovan Mitchell and build around him. And, oh, that is just funny to me. But let's read what Tony said, and then we'll talk about what I think about the report. He said, the Jazz have set a price for Donovan Mitchell, and from their perspective, at this point, it's you meet the price, and they'll trade him, or if you don't, they're going to keep him going into training camp. They don't feel like they have to trade Mitchell or obligated. They don't feel an urgency to trade him. He said, they think the Jazz have multiple roads back to being the team they were a couple of years ago. They already have three first round picks by the end of next season. If they hold on to him, all of their veterans, they'll have 36 to 40 million in cap space. I want to focus though on that first sentence. They think they have multiple roads back to being the team they were a couple of years ago if they want to build around Donovan Mitchell. And this is absolute cap. This is BS. The BS meter is ringing. Woo, woo, because that's what this report is. The Jazz building around Donovan Mitchell is bullshit. And let's talk about why. That is just not possible going forward. You're telling me that you just made a trade. You just made a trade for a guy or traded Rudy Gobert. And all you got back was picks in assets that'll make you a team bet going for better going forward. Also, if the Jazz want to make a move for a star in a trade, the Knicks are going to have a better offer to go get that star. Because if the Knicks don't make a trade for Donovan Mitchell, they're going to go be going superstar hunting in the future for a player. And if the Jazz want to get better, they're going to have to make a trade for a superstar. And their package is not going to be able to compete with the New York Knicks, a team that can trade eight first-round picks in the next seven years. Also, Tony Jones mentioned $30 to $40 million in cap space. What NBA free agent is signing with the Utah Jazz in NBA free agency? And also, if you're going to build around Donovan Mitchell, remember, he has three years left on his contract. This year, it's done. They, are, they have punted. They're not going to make a move to compete this year. Next year is your only real year to compete because the year after that, he's on an expiring deal, and all the reports coming out of Utah are that De uh, Donovan Mitchell wants to leave in free agency in 2025. So you may tell me that you're willing to build around Donovan Mitchell, but it doesn't make any sense. There is no line of thinking or bridge for the Utah Jazz to build around Donovan Mitchell and compete in the near future. Because you only really have one year to maximize that capability of competing. Three years left for Donovan Mitchell. This year's done. You've already punted. Next year's the year to compete. 
and you're telling me you're going to go all in when Mitchell has one more year left on his deal? I don't believe it. I don't buy it. So I'm going down in the comment section, and I am typing cap. Because I do not believe that the Jazz are willing to build around Donovan Mitchell. It doesn't make sense. Their best asset is their own first-round pick going forward. Those three first-round picks that Tony Jones talked about, those are picks that are going to be outside of the lottery. Their pick, if they trade Donovan Mitchell, could be a top five pick in the NBA. That's why I believe it's cap that the Jazz are willing to build around Mitchell. But I want to hear from you, type cap or no cap. Let me know what you think. Are the Jazz actually going to build around Donovan Mitchell? I want to close out this segment talking about what Hoops Hype put up. They put out an article talking about the best tw or the top 25 small forwards in the NBA. And they had R.J. Barrett ranked as the number 14 small forward in the NBA going into the 2022 NBA season. These are the top five guys at the list. And you might already say that this list is BS. Because I'm taking Kevin Durant over Jason Tatum. I'm taking LeBron James over Jason Tatum. And if Kawhi Leonard is healthy, I'm taking him over Jason Tatum. It's not my list. It's their list. But we'll take a look at it. They had Jimmy Butler coming at number five. But this was six through 15 on the list. They had Paul George coming in at six. Brandon Ingram coming in at seven. DeMar DeRozan at eight. Chris Middleton at nine. Mikel Bridges at 10. Wiggins at 11. OG Ananobi at 12, Michael Porter at 13, RJ Barrett at 14, and Keldon Johnson at 15. I want to be mad at this list, but I'm really not all that sure that the list is wrong. I do think RJ Barrett's better than Michael Porter Jr. because the best ability is availability, and that's something Michael Porter Jr. has not been playing in just 125 games in the past four seasons. But let's take a look at what RJ Barrett has done so far in his career. This past year, 20 points per game, three assists, not all that efficient. 41% from the field, and I'm okay with 34% from three. It's not great, it's not terrible. League average is about 36 to 37, but his usage rating was out of this world. 2020, RJ Barrett showed everybody in the NBA the type of player he could be. 17 and a half, three assists, very efficient, and continue to get better every single game. But RJ started slow this past season. We all know that. Let's look at how he finished the season, though. In the final 42 games, R.J. Barrett averaged 24 points per game, nearly four assists, 41% from the field, and 34.5% from downtown. R.J. Barrett caught fire down the end of the season. He looked like an all-star. He played like an all-star. Having multiple 30-point games, having a couple 40-point games, R.J. Barrett showed everybody in the last 42 games of the season where he played 37 minutes per night that he can be a guy that is a player on a good team in the association. But we'll end the, today's video asking you guys this question because I really didn't have a, a problem with the list. I would have had R.J. Barrett ahead of Michael Porter Jr., considering the fact Porter has played in just 125 games in the past four seasons. For that reason, I would take R.J. ahead of him, but I want to leave this up to all the Knicks fans watching right now. Who is the better player? Not who has a brighter future, not someone you take for the next 10 years, who is the better player today? Type RJ for RJ Barrett or MPJ for Michael Porter Jr. Let me know in the comments section what you think. Who do you think is better? RJ for Mr. Barrett, MPJ for Michael Porter Jr. A lot of RJs coming in. Were you guys upset with the list? Like, do you think the list was wrong? Do you think RJ should have been rated higher? We'll actually, we can pop that list up again if we want, Seeps. Let's take a look at the guys rated 6 through 14 or 15 or whatever it was. Do you think that Hoops Hype got it right? Does R.J. Barrett need to be higher? Does R.J. Barrett need to be lower? Let me know in the comment section, Knicks fans. What do you think of this list? Did they get it right? Who's rated too high? Who's rated too low? The more I look at this, I would have had Andrew Wiggins above Mikel Bridges. I would have had Middleton above DeMar DeRozan. And I might have even had Middleton above Brandon Ingram. I think what Middleton did in that title run with the Bucks a couple of years ago was incredible. He showed everybody in the NBA that he's one of the best two-way players, offense, defense, a certified bucket getter. I don't know. I think this list is right for the most part. Some shuffling around. But I think R.J. Barrett at 14 is a solid place for him. Let me know what you, th you think.
Thousand Eyes 85 says definitely lower. Knicks fans overrate uh, RJ. Big Ben says top 10. Jamal is laughing because Michael Porter Jr. is ranked above him. Jamal says they tripping. Barrett's better than MPJ. I agree. Allen says he's better than Wiggins at least. Ah, I don't know. I think going forward, I'd rather have R.J. Barrett, but just after this year, I think Wiggins is a better basketball player. What he, what we, what he, what we saw him do in the finals was kind of incredible. I think I'd roll with him. We got a super chat though. Let's ride. My guy Nick's Galaxy back with it. He said no questions. Just wanted to start the super chats. Let's go. Let's get it going. Let's get the party started. I'm ready to have some fun. It's Wednesday. It's Nick's Now Live Day, or some people like to call it Nick's Live. That's what we do. We like to party. We like to have fun. Nick's Galaxy, cheers to you. Always a real one in the chat. Alan Alford, a new profile picture, my guy. I noticed. I noticed things like that. He said, Rose needs to go. No minutes for him with Spida. Way to keep it real, MG. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate that. I don't know if Rose needs to go, but I don't really think, and I'm I'm right there with you, Alan, with Jalen Brunson and Donovan Mitchell on this team, what type of minutes is Derrick Rose going to have? You're also going to have three average to, to below average guards defensive-wise. Rose isn't a good defender. Jalen Brunson is average, maybe a little above average. And Donovan Mitchell in Utah showed that he can be elite, but we last saw him in the playoffs getting toasted by Jalen Brunson. So I don't think you can have three guards in a rotation of Rose, uh, Brunson, and Mitchell that are all average to below average defenders. I think you're, you're right there, Alan. I don't really think there's that many minutes for him to go. We know that Tom Thibodeau is going to run Jalen Brunson 35-plus minutes. We know he's going to run Donovan Mitchell 35-plus minutes. And you know he's going to play RJ 40 minutes. So there's really not all that much minutes for a guy like Derrick Rose left. Alan, I appreciate the super chat. And we have crossed over 100 likes. Every 100 likes we get on today's show, we're going to do a shot of fireball. We're at 105 likes, 380 people watching. If you haven't yet, hit that thumbs up icon, show some love, and you can also get me drunk in the process. Every super chat, though, just like Alan, just like Nick's Galaxy, will pop you up on screen. Every $10 super chat equals a shot of fireball. $100 in total equals four fireball shots, kind of up in the ante on you guys. And every 100 likes equals a shot. We're at 108 likes, so I'll take a shot. Shout out to everybody that's hit that thumbs up icon. But we've also started on the channel a Super Chat Ring of Honor. And we've, we've gone live on Knicks now three times in the past three weeks. And you guys have been showing up with the Super Chats like crazy. Everyone you see up on screen right now are in the top 10 of the highest paid Super Chats on the channel. Jason B, he came in with 270 balls. Chris F, them did a 50 ball twice. Charlie also dropped in 250 pieces. Jason B, on top of the 270 balls, put in a 50 banger. Mr. Reg, Gritty Guapo, and Nick's Galaxy also dropped $25 supers. If you want to be on this list, you just got to knock somebody off. Send a $30 super, Mr. Reg, Gritty, Gu Gritty Guapo, and maybe Nick's Galaxy. One of those guys is going to have to get knocked off. Show some love, super chat. Everyone gets up on screen, and it's going to turn this show into a party. And we just got a super chat. Hey, Zeus, my guy, put in a $4 super. Didn't ask a question. Please do ask a question, though, hey, Zeus. If you have a question, please ask it. I'd like to answer it. It's, uh, it's more fun that way when we really get to connect and go back and forth with you guys and chop it up. If you have a question, hey Zeus, please send it. If not, thank you for just supporting the show. You are definitely a real one. We've got two mailbags to get to. If you have a question, use hashtag Nick's in the comment section right now. If you want your questions answered, I'd love to answer them. If you have one, use hashtag Nick's. Or Super Chat. Every Super Chat skips the line and is guaranteed to get into today's show. But with 365 people watching, I can't guarantee you that everybody's question is going to get on the show. But a way to guarantee it is by sending in a Super Chat. Yes, sir. Hashtag Nick's. Got a mailbag coming up. 
How are we looking on that end uh, question-wise, Seeps? Do I need to keep making pushes for questions or – Go do be like Matt Shaw. Shout out to you, Matt. He just dropped a question. Uh, and I actually let me let me look that up real quick. If you have a question, get in the comment section. Use hashtag Nix. My guy Rich Rob is in the chat. I was wondering if Rich was gonna join. There he is. Rich, how you doing, bro? Hope you're having a good day. Appreciate you, Rich, for jo joining in. If you haven't yet, hit that like button. 360 people watching, 114 likes. We're about to get into a Nick's mailbag. If you have a question, use hashtag Nick's, and we'll answer it on today's show. I'm ready when you guys are ready. Just give me the signal, and we can roll. Getting some stuff ready for you guys behind the scenes. Shout out to Pete Petey. Shout out to Seatman. They make this show go. I just talk. Alrighty, I got. I see a lot of questions coming in. Shout out to you guys. Skip the line with the super, or just drop a hashtag Nix, and it's up to Seatman if you get in there. Let's do it. Let's get into a Nix mailbag right now. What's going on, Nix fans? You're watching New York Nix now by Chat Sports. Marshall Green here. And if you want to be featured on one of these mailbags, if you want me to answer your questions, it's a two-step process. You got to be a subscriber. So go down right now, hit that big red button. Help us get to 12,000 subs. And you also got to join us for our live shows. So turn on your notifications so every time we go live, you guys know and you'll join the party. Like my guy David Brown is, he says, is Cam starting over Fournier a better starting lineup? So Ian Begley a couple of months back or weeks back at this point said that there's probably going to be a shakeup in the starting lineup. And what he meant was Evan Fournier is most likely not going to be a starter. And now all the guys that people thought of, Knicks fans that thought he could take a spot, were Quentin Grimes or Cam Reddish. I think Cam is kind of a clunky fit, in my opinion, in this starting lineup with Brunson, Cam, RJ, Julius, and Mitchell Robinson. He's another player that needs the ball in his hands to be effective. Cam's not really an off-ball guy, and that's not a problem. I think those type of players are needed on teams, and I think he'd be best coming off the bench alongside of a guy like Fournier quickly and Derek Rose off the bench with Obi Toppin, Mitchell Ro or, uh, uh, Hartenstein, and Jericho Sims off the bench. I think Quentin Grimes is the guy, though, that's going to end up starting at shooting guard because the Knicks need some perimeter defense. I think Cam is a good defender, but I think Grimes has the potential to be an elite defender. And if you have him alongside Barrett and Jalen Brunson, you have a guy that can hang out in the corner and shoot threes, and that's not really what we want Cam to do. We don't want him to be a guy that just hangs out in the corner. Let him dribble the rock, let him get to the hole, let him play make, let him be a hooper, because that's what he is. I do think it'd be better, David, but I would go with uh, Quentin Grimes over a guy like Cam Reddish. Appreciate your question, though. Omar, what up, man? Do you think Mitch and Hart can play the four and the five? Um... I think we will see a little bit about that, a little bit of that this season. Um, we know Tibbs likes to go with the traditional lineups. He had lineups last year with Mitchell Robinson and Taj Gibson on the floor at times. I know a lot of people when the Knicks signed Isaiah Hardenstein, they were like, we got to stretch big. And while he is able to make threes, he doesn't really shoot a lot of them. He started to shoot more threes down to the end of the season, but I want to say he only shot like 40 threes last season. The best part about Hardenstein's game is his ability to, to be a playmaker and get others involved. And you can run your offense through him. He's a very smart player. He's a guy that has advanced passing skills for a big man. So you could see him kind of running the Knicks offense through him at the top of the key. I expect that and would not be surprised if Mitch and Isaiah Hartenstein are up to, uh, on the floor at the same time. But I don't want people to think he's just some stretch floor that's going to let threes fly. That's not really his game. He can make them, but he's not going to take them every single dime down the court. Albert, what up, man? Why do you hate Cam Reddish? I don't hate Cam Reddish, guys. I really don't. But I do hate kind of the Cam Reddish hive, as I would call it. People that think that he's the next Paul George or the next Tracy McGrady or the next 6'8", 6'9", wing that's going to take over the NBA. If he was that guy, he would have already done that. And he hasn't done that through the first three years of his NBA career. These are the numbers. Only played... 
in 15 games last year for the Knicks and never really found his groove is kind of the way I would describe it. 25% from three, he does shoot good from the corner. But at some point, you just got to put it all together. And when you look at these three seasons, they're all just kind of underwhelming. He hasn't shot above 42% in his career one time. He hasn't. He, he was good in 2021 where he averaged 12 points and shot 38% from three. He was good in the wet Eastern Conference Finals when the Hawks made it. I think Cam Reddish can be good. I think he has all the talent. He's 6'8", 6'9", smooth. If you saw Cam Reddish hooping at a park, you'd be like, this guy's going to be the next best player in the NBA because he's silky smooth, 6'8", can shoot it, can dribble it, can play make, can play defense. But at some point, it's on you. You can't always be a victim of your circumstance, and you got to go out there and be someone that's good in the NBA. I'm still waiting on Cam Reddish to do that. I don't think he can't be. I think he can be good. I'm just going to wait to see it because going into year four, he hasn't really shown me it yet. But I want to ask you guys this question. Great question about Cam. Well, it really wasn't a question. You just asked me why I hated him, and I don't hate him. But who is the better player in your opinion? Quentin Grimes, Cam Reddish. Type CR for Reddish, type QG for Grimes. I'm very curious what all you guys think. The real ones have been showing out like crazy here on New York Knicks. Now, the real one roll calls have been a hit. The real ones have been tuning into every video, and I wanted to get you guys a shirt so you can rep it and be an official New York Knicks Now real one. If you're a real one and you want a shirt, go to chatsports.com slash real Knicks. The shirts won't last forever. They're already selling like crazy. I promise you, you're going to want to get one. Mine is on the way, and I cannot wait to wear it on the show. Show some love. Be a real one. Get a shirt. Chatsports.com slash real Knicks. That link will be in the comments and description of today's show. Jay Boogie with a whoo, $20 super chat from my guy Jay Boogie. He said, I'm the closer for KTV. Wanted to let you know that I'll be name dropping this show in a new Knicks anthem for the great work y'all do. Salute, salute, salute. Dude, that's that's big time. CP the franchise is the GOAT, man. He paved the way for guys like me and for all the Knicks content creators out there. Richie into the Knicks verse. Everybody that makes Knicks fan film school, everybody that makes, makes Knicks content is following in the footsteps of CP the franchise. I love Knicks fan TV. I still watch it. He's a GOAT, and you're a GOAT, Jay Boogie. Send me the link on Twitter. I can't wait to listen. Appreciate you, bro. Another $20 soups. The soups are rolling in. Sage of the Knicks path. Spider will be a Nick Labor Day weekend. Knicks are going to help the Knicks. Lakers are going to help to get the Knicks off of Westbrook once Pat Beverly is eligible to be traded. And I've heard those rumors that the deal is contingent on once the players that the Jazz got in the trade from the Minnesota Timberwolves, that those players can't be traded until about August. And that makes some sense, but I just think this deal is going to come closer, or I said August, I meant September. I think this deal will get done the closer and closer we get to training camp. Because despite all the reports that you hear about Danny Ainge and the Utah Jazz willing to hold on to Donovan Mitchell, I don't believe it. I don't buy it. You can tell me you're building around him to win, but I will wait until you make a winning move. And the Utah Jazz have not made one move this summer to better their team for this season. I'll wait for that to happen. But I do think a trade gets done. I think Labor Day is about the timetable that I would roll with. Sage of the Knicks path, appreciate your question. Appreciate your super. Shout out to you, bro. You're a real one. Another super chat. This is a super chat bag. Shout out to Daniel Rodriguez. He said, Jalen Brunson's signing was a joke. They lost in a pro-am game. Dylan. Oh, Dylan, 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 Dylan. Um, the JB signing was a joke. Uh, can we put, just run through some of those Jalen Brunson? St are, are the Jalen Brunson? I don't know if we have him in there, but it's it was not a joke. It's not even close. I think you're kind of just being a hater, to be honest with you. It is upsetting that Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, and Obi Toppin lost in a pro-am game, but those guys weren't going hard. They weren't rebounding. They weren't trying to get hurt. While the other guys they were playing up against are playing for their lives. They're playing to be noticed. That's the biggest stage that, that some of those guys have ever played with. I know some of them are international hoopers and former D1 hoopers. So these just weren't scrubs. These were hoopers. 
But there's no way that Julius Randle, Obi Toppin, and Jalen Brunson should lose to them. And if you're saying that the Jalen Brunson signing was a joke because they lost in a Pro-Am game, I don't know if I can ever get you back to this side of sanity. But Dylan, I appreciate your question, boss. If you haven't yet, go hit that big red button. Subscribe to New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. We're growing like crazy, and that's a shout-out to all of the real ones out there. We are on the doorstep of 12,000 subscribers, and I want to get there by the end of the week. So if you haven't yet, subscribe. And if you have, send it to a friend. Send it to someone that loves the Knicks and tell them to subscribe. They won't regret it. You won't regret it. We're growing like crazy, and we're just getting started. Subscribe. Hit that big red button. Let's ride. Jamal, what up, bro? Toppin or Grimes if you had to choose? I go back and forth every day, Jamal. I really do. It's tough. I've come to the conclusion that I'm willing to trade one. Whatever it is, don't tell me who it is until the trade's done. I, I, I don't know if I could choose one because I love Obi. I love Quentin Grimes. I think they both bring stuff to the table that winning teams could use. But I'm not trading both. You can have one. You can't have both. If you, if you made me choose today... I want to keep Quentin Grimes. I go back and forth every time. I can't decide. I think Grimes is going to be a better NBA winning piece going forward. His skill set kind of translates easier to winning defense, threes, shot creation, and the ability to play make. I think Obi might have a higher ceiling, but I think Quentin Grimes has a higher floor. You know, the higher floor, lower ceiling type thing. I'd roll with Grimes. I don't know. I'll ask you guys, though. Who would you want to keep in a Donovan Mitchell trade? Type one for Obi Toppin, type six for Quentin Grimes. Jamal, great question. I think, I think Grimes, I think, I don't know. Stop asking me that. <laughs> it's a tough question. I don't know. Next question, come on. Richard77, do you think Julius Randle can bounce back? A, a topic I'm much more certain of. I do think Julius Randle can bounce back. Will he bounce back, I think, is the more important question. Will he? I don't know. Can he? Yes. Let's take a look, though, at what Julius Randle has done the past two seasons wearing the blue and orange. 2020, 2021, he was one of the best players in the NBA. Finished top 10 in MVP voting. 24 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists, 45% from the field, and 41% from downtown. Julius Randle was a freaking baller in that season. He was a bucket getter. But he did it without the fans in attendance. Once the fans put their butts in seats, he started to play bad, dating back all the way to the Atlanta Hawks series. This past year, the raw numbers look great, right? 20 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists. Holy shit, Julius Randle had another great season. Just look at the last two graphics. 41% from the field and 30% from downtown. But it just wasn't the play of Julius Randle. He was disconnected. He was a shitty teammate. He was someone that seemed like he didn't get along with people. He was a pouty crybaby. He had like $163,000 in fines. He set a new career high in technicals. It just seemed like he kind of wore out his welcome, the thumbs down thing. I think he can bounce back. Will he? I don't know. I, I'll ask you though, because I'm unsure. What's your confidence level in Julius Randle? Scale it from one to 10. One being you're not confident, 10 being you're confident, I would say this. I think Julius Randle, the player of Randle, is closer to the guy we saw in 2020 than what we saw in 2021. If we can get somewhere in the middle, that's a good basketball player. And I do think with Jalen Brunson around, Randle is going to have a better season. Less of the playmaking burden is off of Randle's shoulder. Some scoring burden is off his shoulder. And Brunson is going to get him easy looks, and I think he's going to go back to being more of a pick-and-roll player and a guy that operates closer to the basket. But I'm not all that confident. Let me know how you're feeling. Scale it from 1 to 10. Francisco, if D. Rose stays, do you think somebody, do you think someday he be a Knicks legend too? Once a Nick, always a Nick. Derrick Rose is already a New York Knicks legend in my opinion. Obviously not because of the success he's had on the court. But I love Derrick Rose. We all love Derrick Rose. I don't think there's any person out there that can legitimately say they hate Derrick Rose. But if Derrick Rose sticks around in a Donovan Mitchell trade and the Knicks get good, really good, and go into the playoffs and win games and Derrick Rose is on that roster, he can continue to be a fan favorite like he already is. I love Derrick Rose. He was the best player on the Knicks in that playoff series against the Hawks. He's a great player, 
class act, doesn't get enough credit for the way he was able to rejuvenate his career, a guy that was great because of his athleticism, transitioned into being a mid-range assassin and scorer. Derrick Rose deserves credit for that. He's already a legend. I think he is also really, really loved by New York Knicks fans. Last question on today's mailbag. Do you really think Jalen Brunson is going to make a difference? Yeah, I do think Jalen Brunson is going to make a huge difference. Because when you play in the NBA with Alec Burks as your point guard for 60 games, the upgrade you're going to see from Alec Burks to Jalen Brunson, if you're on the, the side that Sin City is, is kind of hating the Jalen Brunson siding, talk to me in four months and tell me that Jalen Brunson is not your first or second favorite player on the Knicks. So I think it's going to be the R.J. Barrett show and the Jalen Brunson show. Everything that Knicks fans and New York fans want in an athlete, Jalen Brunson brings. He's been doubted. He, he beat the odds. He's not the most athletic, but he plays with a chip on his shoulder. He plays with passion. He plays with heart, and he plays a winning brand of basketball. That's what Knicks fans love, and that's what Jalen Brunson is. And I believe everybody, even you, Sin City, that Jalen Brunson will be one of your favorite Knicks come season end. I want to show JB some love. Let's just type 11 in the comment section. Drop number 11 in the comment section. I'll give shout outs to everybody that does. Drop number 11 in the comment section. Let's show Jalen Brunson some love. JB for three. Bang! I can hear it already. Drop 11 in the comment section to show Jalen Brunson some love. Harlem girl, you're right. The Jalen Brunson hate is weird. I just don't get it, man. I really don't. I don't think people really watched all that closely to Dallas Mavericks games, and I don't expect you to. You're not a Mavs fan. But the Mavs season was toast when Luka Doncic got hurt in the first round against the Utah Jazz, and Jalen Brunson looked around, saw Dorian Finney-Smith, saw a terrible Mavs team, to be honest, outside of Luka, and said, no, Luka, no problem. I'm going to go average 30 points over the next three games and get this series back to Dallas with the Mavs up 2-1. to one. That's what Jalen Brunson did. And he dropped 40 points in a playoff victory. You know the last time the Knicks had a New York Knick drop 40 points in a playoff victory? It was Carmelo Anthony back in 2012. And before that, it was Patrick Ewing in the frickin' 90s. The Knicks haven't had a hooper like Jalen Brunson in a very long time. I am excited, and I am ready to see Jalen Brunson cook up the garden. It is going to be a sight to see. Super chat, Sage of the Knicks path. Cam Reddish has more tattoos than good games in the NBA. Um, okay, uh, that is funny. Yes, but, yeah, it's funny. I, I tried to, like, you know, spin it and make it something else. It, it's funny. I don't, I don't hate Cam. I think sometimes people think I do. I just don't really think that he's someone that can be an all-NBA player. Maybe one day, I just don't see it yet. He, once he shows me he is, though, I'll be, I'll be his biggest supporter. That's what I am. Sage, appreciate you, bro, for the super. SB Gorilla, or is it Gorilla? SB Gorilla, that's what I'm calling you. Random Knicks, a super chat to drop some random Knicks. Let's ride. Clarence Witherspoon, Scott Brooks, Anthony Bonner, David Wingate, Terry Cummings, Johnny Newman, Xavier McDaniel, Andrew Lang, is that an L or an O or an A? I can't even read. Travis Knight and Doug Christie. Doug Christie is a pretty funny one. So do you still have the viewer activity hooked up over there? Do you still, how many $10 Super Chats did we get? I, know I saw like a couple 20s. Three Super Chats above 10. That means I, I owe three shots. We're also at $69 in Super Chats. Let's type nice in the comment section because anything that's, you, you know the joke. $69 in Supers, that's nice. That means we're $31 away from 100 bones. And every time we get to $100 in Super Chats, that equals four shots. I already owe you guys three. So, PD, if, if, do I need to do it? Do you want me to do it? I'll do it. You look busy. You got double community. Three, all right. All righty, I owe three shots for the guys that super chatted. Shout out to everybody that did.
Joe Curry, for your 100 likes. Well, we already got to 100 likes, and we already took that shot. We did that to start the show. So, wait, did we? I took a shot. I don't remember what it was for. I think it was. I, Joe, I think I did. I think I did. We are 50 likes away from another one. If you haven't yet, hit that thumbs up icon. I'm going to throw back some shots real quick. Ugh. You guys are pretty funny in the chat. I love reading your guys' chats. He says, take two at once. Well, we only got one shot right here, so. That's two. One more. This stuff tastes like shit. I'll tell you that much. S dot, yeah, I think I did. I thought I did. I, I already kind of forgot, but we did. That's four shots already. We have 162 likes. That means we're 38 likes away from another shot. We're also $31 away from having to take four shots. And if you send in a $31 super, that's a shot. So it, it, it could turn into a party here really, really quick. But we also do have another mailbag to get to. So if you want to get a question on the mailbag like we just did, a lot of people... I don't even know what that means, Joe. Uh, mailbag time. Use hashtag Nix or Super Chat. Everybody that Super Chats gets up on screen. If you use hashtag Nix, uh, there's going to be a lot of people you're competing with to get your questions up on screen. I saw a lot of questions coming in, and I want to answer all your questions. But priorities and Super Chats earn priority. I also want to give some love to the Super Chat Ring of Honor honorees. These guys have been dropping the bag on New York Knicks now recently. Jason B. dropped 270 bones last week, as well as a 50 bar burger. Chris Effum dropped 250 bones. Charlie Neek as well dropped 250 pieces. And Mr. Reg, I hope you're not smoking, Reg, dropped a 25 ball. Gritty Guapo, ah, oh, the burp. Rudy Guapo dropped in a 25 ball, and Nick's Galaxy also put in a $25 super. If you want to be featured on this Nick, uh, this Nick's, this list next week, you got to knock somebody off. It's just the way the rules are, no doubt about it. Also, if you haven't yet, give me a follow over on Twitter. The link to my Twitter will be in the live chat of today's show. All you got to do is click on it. Give me a follow, and I will make sure to follow everybody back that gives me a follow. And at the end of the show, when I follow everybody back, I will give you a shout-out for everybody that gave me a follow. Whew. Give me a follow on Twitter, at MarshallGreen underscore. Trying to get to 2,000 followers, man. That's like, when I heard you get to 2,000 followers... I heard that's when you start, like, really being a big-time guy. And I'm trying to be big-time. So give me a follow at Marshall Green underscore. I'll give you a follow back and a shout-out at the end of the show. We're about to get into a mailbag, though. If you have a question, hashtag Nix, or if you want a super chat, we got $69 in supers. As nice as that is, I want to get past that. Let's get to 100. 31 likes. Uh, 30, not 31 likes away. $31 away from getting to $100 in supers. I think we can get there. I'm not going to doubt you guys. If you have a question, hashtag Nix or Super Chat. Bill says you big time without Twitter. Bill, I love you. I love you for that, Bill. Thank you. Got some questions rolling in. Jay Rodriguez has a question. Big Benno de GCC has a question. Jamal Jones has a question. If you have a question, Use hashtag Nix. Get set up over there, Seeps, and you just holler at me when you're ready. Hashtag Nix or Super Chat. We got a mailbag coming up. We're about to get into a mailbag on the show. It is mailbag time. Good luck. That's, uh, that's ex-producer Matthew Peterson's punchline and trivia. It's like, all right, you guys have three minutes to answer this question. Good luck. He's smiling. He loves it. Petey is the best trivia host on this side of the Mason-Dixon. 
<laughs> I knew you'd like that. I don't, I'm not, hey. Uh, if you knew that, then I'm very proud of you. I did. Not, I don't know. I was going to say the Mississippi, but I use that one a lot. I will say this, though. There's only a couple people in this office that have won trivia with Petey. And the guy that has an orange hoodie on, he won it. And I, I probably could only name four, 15, 16 states if I saw a map. But mailbag time. I know where the Knicks play. That's a fact. Let's get into it. Let's get into a mailbag right now. What up, Knicks fans? You're watching New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. As always, we're about to get into a mailbag where I answer your questions live, which aired on our live show every Wednesday, 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern. Turn your notifications on and subscribe so you can join us next week when we go live. But I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Mint Mobile, a cell phone provider that's hooking you up with the best deal out there. Unlimited talk and unlimited text for as low as $15 per month. Get started today. Go to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. Big Ben, what? Big Beano, Big Beno? Big Beano? What up, man? Should the Knicks sign Melo back if we don't get Spida? No. If the Knicks do not sign or make a trade for uh, Donovan Mitchell, I don't think there's a reason to go and make a move for Carmelo Anthony. There's actually a way in on this question, Seeps, if you want to pop that up. We had a plan around it. But there's no reason, in my opinion, to go and sign a guy like Carmelo Anthony if you don't trade for Donovan Mitchell. Because think about it. You already kind of have a log jam on the bench. You have a lot of guys that need minutes. Emmanuel Quickly, Derek Rose, Cam Reddish, Obi Toppin, Evan Fournier, or Quentin Grimes. You also have Hartenstein, and you also have Sims. There's just not minutes, in my opinion, for Carmelo Anthony if you don't make a trade for Don Mitchell. If you trade for Mitchell, you should for sure go and make a move for Carmelo Anthony. Was that? Do we not want to go to that? the way and you just had it up but yeah to answer your question big ben i would not go and make a trade or sign carmelo anthony if i don't trade for donovan mitchell but i'll ask you do you want carmelo anthony on the knicks type seven for yes or type n for no i'm curious what all you think do you want carmelo anthony on the knicks type seven for yes type n for no let me know in the comments joe curry What's out there in a trade for Evan Fournier and Derrick Rose? Small forwards preferred. I really don't think there is a trade out there right now, or I think the Knicks would have made it. I think they have their eyes set on Donovan Mitchell, and if they don't make a Donovan Mitchell trade, they're going to reassess until the All-Star break, hoping that a superstar becomes available. But the type of player that they're looking for isn't someone that's just going to come in and start. They're looking for a needle mover. And I'm not sure there's a needle mover out there at the small forward department right now. I love OG Ananobi. But I really don't think he's available. There was rumors from Jake Fisher of the NBA's Bleacher Report that he was, but it sounds like that's only in a trade for Kevin Durant. I don't think there's a small forward out there that the Knicks could go make a trade for. The only guy that's really on the trade market is Donovan Mitchell and that one guy that wears number seven in Brooklyn. And I don't think the Knicks are interested in trading for him. Deuce Hive. If the Knicks can't get Donovan Mitchell, why not try to get KD? Uh, you speak of the devil, and there he goes. Number seven from Brooklyn. Um, Why? Why not? I ask you why. Why should the Knicks be interested in Kevin Durant? Doesn't make a lot of sense in my opinion. He's 34, 35, probably has two, three years le left at an elite level. He's mocked us. He's made fun of us. He turned us down in free agency. And could we really see Joe Sy and the Brooklyn Nets Trading KD across the pond to the New York Knicks to go play for the superior franchise in New York. Sounds good on paper. Sounds good on 2K, but I don't really think it makes a whole lot of sense. And I don't even want to see Kevin Durant play for the Knicks. But I'll ask you, would you want Kevin Durant on the Knicks? Do you think it would make a lot of sense to go and make a trade for Kevin Durant? Let me know what you think. Type KD for yes or type FKD for no. Let me know. I'm typing my FKD in the comment section. I don't want to see Kevin Durant anywhere close to a New York Knicks uniform. But hey, this show's all about you, the audience, and the audience interaction. Let me know. Type KD for yes. Type FKD for no. Connor, I saw ESPN listed Melo as the number one free agent signing the Knicks should make. Thoughts? Yeah, we just talked about this question. I don't really think there's a reason for the Knicks to go out and sign him, especially if you don't make a trade for Donovan Mitchell. I think if you trade for Donovan Mitchell, then you can go out and sign him because you're going to lose some pieces on the 
on the, the bench if you trade for him. We'll look at Carmelo Anthony's stats. Still a really good player in the NBA. 13 points per game, four rebounds last year, played in just 26 minutes. 23 points per game in 26 minutes is good for Melo. He was still efficient, 44% from three, 37.5% from downtown. He's still a good player, but I don't really think it makes a lot of sense roster-wise for the Knicks going forward to sign Carmelo Anthony if they don't trade for Donovan Mitchell. If they do trade for him, though, I think it makes a lot of sense. Appreciate your question, though, bro. If you haven't yet, what are you doing? Switch over to Mint Mobile because they're offering cell phone plans for as low as 50 dollars per month unlimited talk unlimited text 5g the largest 5g network in the nation no reason not to switch over and it's super easy you can switch over from the comfortability of your house keep your same phone and your same phone number and you get to save money in the process sounds like a win-win to me do it today mintmobile.com slash chat sports joel my dog what up bro what other players do you see that the Knicks should trade for? Right now, I don't think there is anyone else to trade for. I think your roster is set. It really is. I think the Knicks have their eyes set on a guy like Donovan Mitchell. If they don't get Donovan Mitchell, they're going to roll with what they have. And that's going to be Jalen Brunson at the one. In my opinion, Quentin Grimes at the two. R.J. Barrett at the three. Julius Randle at the four. And Mitchell Robinson at the five. I think they start the year like that. And they'll assess it going forward, leading up until the trade deadline. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to make a trade. If there's a guy out there, I think the Knicks would have already made the trade. Thing is, I don't think there's a superstar out there available. The Knicks at some point will have to consolidate assets. They have 10 players on this team that are younger than 25, and they have 11 first-round picks and 11 second-round picks over the next seven years. You're not making all 22 picks, and when you already have 10 guys on this team or younger than 25, at some point, the Knicks will make a trade for a superstar. It's going to be Donovan Mitchell or it's going to be a, name, a player to be named later, someone that's not officially on the market right now. Nick, what up, bro? Do you think Spida gets traded at the deadline when the pressure is up on the Jazz since they won't be playoff contenders? I could see that. If the, if the Jazz hold on to Donovan Mitchell going into the season, I do think at the trade deadline they will feel some pressure to make a trade for Donovan Mitchell because at that point you really only have one year left of Donovan Mitchell to compete. He will still have two years on his contract, but him on that last year, he's an expiring player, and all signs and reports coming out of Salt Lake City are that Mitchell wants to become a free agent in 2025. So the Jazz are operating on a really small timeline. Three years sounds like a long time, but when you break it down, is this year the, Nick, the Jazz have punted on being a contender. Next year is the really only year to contend, because the year after that, he's an expiring deal, and building around a superstar on an expiring deal, when there's rumors out there that he wants to leave in free agency, that ain't it, Jim. That is not it. Good question, though. Big Blue, what up, fool? Can we just make getting rid of Randall a priority, please? If there was anybody out there willing to trade for Julius Randall, I think they would have already done it. His value is at an all-time low right now in any business, whether you're in sports, whether you're trading stocks, whether you're building a football team, whether you're going grocery shopping, you don't sell low. You, you do not sell an asset when it's at its lowest point in value, and that's what Julius Randle is right now. I think he could be better this year. I think he'll be better with a guy like Jalen Brunson. If the Knicks could trade him to dump him, I think they would have already done it, but I don't think they're in the camp of just dumping a guy like Julius Randle for nothing. They're going to want something back. If you haven't yet, go down right now, hit that big red button, subscribe, youtube.com slash TV. We are trying to get to, to 12,000 subscribers on the channel. If you love the Knicks and you're looking for another place to get daily Knicks content, we're your one-stop shop, youtube.com slash TV. Go down right now and hit that big red button. Super chat from Hector. Why are the Knicks worry about picks if they are not going to be in the lottery unless they're planning on doing so? I don't think the picks are the holdup. Everything that I've heard and read, the picks aren't going to be the holdup in a Donovan Mitchell trade. It's the players. They don't want to trade Quentin Grimes. They don't want to trade Derrick Rose or the reports. So I think it's the players. I think the Knicks are cool with giving up the number of picks it's going to take to get a Donovan Mitchell trade done. But I do not think it's, it's the picks being the holdup. I think it's the players. They want to hold on to as many kids as they can. They love quickly. They love topping. They love Grimes. They want to hold on to Rose. I think it's the players, not the picks being held up. 
I can see the Knicks trading all of their picks for a guy like Mitchell if they get to keep the young players. Last question from Polly. Have you seen IQ working out this summer? He looks like he gained muscle as well as bounce. Yeah, he looks like a different animal. And we'll pop some pictures up on screen. Emmanuel quickly looks big. He looks like he's been in the gym. His shoulders are broader. He looks like he's put on a lot of muscle. And that's kind of kind of what we want. Here's a picture as well. He looks really big. You can see his arms look bigger. And there's also that clip that went viral where he put the ball on the deck, the two, the one dribble power move, left, right, rose, and dunked it. And that's not something we've really ever seen out of a guy like Emmanuel Quickly. He looks healthy. He looks athletic. He looks bouncy. I think Quickly is going to have a big year if he's back with the New York Knicks this year and he's not included in a Donovan Mitchell trade. And not just because what I've seen this summer, but what I saw in the final 22 games of the season makes me believe that Emmanuel Quickly can be a primetime player in the NBA. In the final two games, or 12, 22 games, where he played just 28 minutes per night, the dude was cooking. 16 and a half points per game, five assists, 44% from the deck, and almost 40% from downtown. Quickly's a bucket getter. He's a better version or going to be a better version, in my opinion, of a guy like Lou Will. I think he plays more defense. He's six foot three, six foot ten wingspan. He's not a small guard that can get taken advantage of on defense. I think quickly is going to have a long, successful career in the NBA. And I hope it's with the New York Knicks. I love me some IQ. And I just want everyone to show Emmanuel quickly some love in the comment section right now. Type IQ in the comments. So I feel like he's a player that doesn't get talked about enough by Knicks fans because we just assume. He's probably going to be in a Don and Mitchell trade. But I'm not really all that sure I would just throw him in. I'd love to keep him. I think he's a super six man, and he can be a player on a winning team. But let me know. Show Emmanuel quickly some love. Type IQ in the comments section right now. IQ, IQ, IQ. Emmanuel quickly is a beast, bro. Steve, the worst triangle. Bill, Will. John, Ivorone, Big L, William, Pool Crack. Comment got blocked, but he said, break news. I shit my pants respectfully. That was hilarious, bro. Steve Lowe says, keep Grimes quickly and Toppin. Others can go. If you're keeping Grimes quickly and Toppin, why would the Jazz do the deal? With all due respect. Unless the Knicks are going to include all eight first-round picks. It's a sliding scale. The more players you include... The less picks you got to give up. The more picks you give up, the less players you got to include. That's kind of the way. Breaking news, my bad from Pool Crack. That was funnier than your poop pants joke. Um, I only speak 100% facts as IQ equals immensely questionable. I don't know what there is to question. You average 16 points per game in 28 minutes per night. The only question I know is that dude's a freaking baller. Connor says IQ's my favorite player. What up, Connor? Glad you joined the party. Big Blue, IQ. Steven says IQ. King P says trade for Sexton. Uh, I don't know about that, Jim. I don't think I'm in the, in the boat of trading for Colin Sexton. 191 likes. $74 in supers. We are nine likes away from a shot. We are $26 away from four shots. Before we get on out of here, Someone do it. Someone send in a $25 super chat so we can get to $100 in supers. That was the goal for today's show. We wanted to get to $100 in soups. I said we could do it. Some people in the office, they didn't think we could. 197 likes, three likes away. I'll just start pouring up that shot now because I know three more people are going to hit that like button. I know the real ones are going to show up, show out. Hit that like button. 199 likes. So I'll get that shot ready. 201 likes. I know to never doubt Knicks now in the real ones out there. <sighs> Shit socks. All righty. 26 bones away from $100 in Super Chats. Let's show the, uh, the ring of honor if we can, Seeps. Big Blue says, can Marshall give Julius Randle a class in heart? I would love to teach Julius Randle a little bit about giving a shit. It's just, it's upsetting. I feel like he is a lot of talent kind of being wasted. 
because he is talented. He can put the ball on the deck. He can score at all three levels. He can get others involved. He's an elite rebounder. There's no doubt about it. Damn day. What up, fam? Joe Curry says, get the man a fan. Uh, I, I actually do have a fan. It's just not on screen. It is kind of hot, though. But we have a super chat ring of honor here. The last, oh, $50 super from SB Gorilla. Someone has to get knocked off the super chat ring of honor because SB Gorilla just put in a super chat for 49 bones. Boom. He says that better not be apple cider, bro. Come on, dude. You think I'd do that? If you've seen me talking as this show goes on, I would bet that the slurring has increased some. Go back to past shows and uh, and let me know what you think. SB Grilla, MVP of today's show, and is now going to be a part of the top 10 ring of honor. All right, so this is what we have going on right here. We'll let it ride for a little bit. It, 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 just a little bit, though. SB Grilla. So this is what's going to happen. Just crossed over $100 in supers. So that equals four shots. You also sent in a $49 super chat. And that is another five. So we owe nine shots right now. Nine shots for SB Gorilla. I'll start with one. N3 Utronic says, he says, Fireball is so ass. How can we send a different bottle? The thing is, I agree, it does suck. But my favorite liquor is free liquor. And that's what this is. This is free liquor. This is what the bosses buy. This is what the head honchos buy. That's what's in the freezer. If it's free, I'm going to drink it because my favorite liquor is free liquor. No doubt about it. Why are people just, oh, what, what's the SB? Oh, for SB Gorilla. Type SB in the chat. I was wondering what was going on in the chat. SB in the chat. All right, that's one shot. Seeps, I'm going to need you to come up here and take a shot for me. SB Gorilla, another $10 super. That gets us back up to we still owe nine shots. Every $10 super equals a shot. So we own ten, nine, super, nine shots right now. Nine shots of fireball on the wall. Nine shots of fireball. Take one down. Eight shots of fireball on the wall. Seeps, give Patrick Seatman some love. Pushing the buttons, making this car go. This show's not possible without Seatman. He's going to take a shot, two shots for me to kind of load. He said he's going to take three because he's not a phony. He's not a phony. Let's ride. So now we owe eight. No, seven. Seven. We still owe seven. Me and Seeps, we'll go back and forth here. Seven shots of fireball. Rich Rob was in the chat. I haven't seen him that often, but I would not be surprised if Rich Rob is not driving through the city of New York on his car. He's got a TV in there, and he's playing New York Knicks now. After this, we owe five shots. All right. Oh, let's, let's ride it. Let's do it again. Big Pat from Big Ben. Hector says you're going to sleep good tonight. I, I will. I usually get my best sleep according to my Apple Watch on Wednesday nights. Oh, Hector, I'm not allowed to take him. Come on. No, I, I'm going to be honest. I can't. I can't take, I can't take 10 plus shots. All right, after this, we owe four more. Seeps will take one more, and then I'll take the rest. It's the rules. I, I got a whole, I'll be, I'm down with that. Yeah, uh, what do you think? It's up to them, really. Yeah, I mean, my producer just asked me, do we want to cut the live stream off, or do we want to keep going? Do you guys want me to answer more questions? I'm down to answer as many questions as you guys have. It's just up to y'all. If you guys don't have questions for me, if you guys don't want to send in any, uh, Joel says more questions. Joe says live. Keith says keep going. Look, I I guess I mean look, we're only gonna stay live if you guys 
Oh, that's disgusting. Um, we're only going to stay live if uh, you guys keep it going. The soups, the likes, the comments, the questions. That's how it's going to be. I love to stay up here and talk Knicks all day. Green Goblin says, who do you think the starting five should be? I think it should be, if we don't trade for Donovan Mitchell, I think it should be, I think it should be, Hector says take one for the fans. Well, we still do have four shots to take. Because SB Gorilla came in and dropped a, whoa, Nelly. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so I still have four more shots. I'll take one. Starting five, though. I got distracted. Green Goblin. Starting five. Jalen Brunson, Quentin Grimes, R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson. That would be my starting five going into the season. Because I think if you start Brunson... Barrett and Mitchell Robinson and Julius Randle. You need that shooting guard, other wing spot to be a, a kind of a defender and kind of a guy that can stretch the floor three point wise. And I think the best three point shooter and defender we have is Quentin Grimes. And I think he is one of the only players on this roster that can like be productive without the ball in his hands. A guy like Cam Reddish, I think he has to have the ball to be effective. Evan Fournier has to have plays drawn up for him. So I think you don't really want that other guy in the lineup next to Brunson and Barrett and Randall, a guy that needs the ball and needs plays to be drawn up for him because it's just not enough shots to go around. You need another floor spacer. You need another, def another defender. And I think that best gets fit by a guy like Quinton Grimes. Great question, though, Green Goblin. Oh, another super chat from SB Gorilla, or as he likes to be called, Silverback Gorilla. So I just took one. That means three, and then another one on top of that is four. So I still owe four shots because SB Gorilla is, is, is letting this thing go. Green Goblin says, respectable answer. And he also said, I like Cam in place of Grimes. I understand that. But Green Goblin, I want to ask you this question. Where do you think that Cam can be most effective? Do you think it's in a starting lineup next to a guy like Brunson, Barrett, and Randall who all are going to have the ball? Or do you think it's off the bench where he can come in and kind of dominate the ball and kind of dominate and really be the focus of that bench unit and score? I think he's best coming off the bench and getting those reps compared to coming into a starting lineup where his opportunities and his usage rating won't be that high. Green Goblin, let me know what you think. Seepman is going to join us in on the chat. Seeps, what do you think about that statement? Let me know. Like, what do you think? Do you think it should be Grimes? Do you think it should be Cam Reddish? Like, where do you think those guys fit at the starting spot next to Brunson, Randall, uh, RJ, and Mitchell Robinson? Who do you think that shooting guard small forward should be? I think the best fit is probably Quentin Grimes and then putting Cam Reddish off the bench. Uh, Quentin Grimes, I mean, I hear you talking about all the time, Marsh. Mini Clay, he could yeah. be the Clay for the Knicks. I mean, he's a typical 3 and D guy. And plus, you know, Cam Reddish, like Marsh was saying earlier in the stream, like if, he, like if you saw him at the park playing ball, just pick up, you would think this guy's a top 10 guy in the league. He's got everything you can do. But Quentin Grimes, that catch and shoot game he has, he's an elite defender. And also, Knowing your role is so important. Like, I feel like Cam Reddish, when he was coming out of high school, he was a top-rated recruit. He probably still thinks he can be a 20-a-game guy. I think Quentin Grimes knows if I want to be successful in the NBA, I'll just be 10-a-game, shoot a 40% from three clip, play really solid defense. But also, this is the best part of this, the live stream right now. We're going to take your questions just from the chat. Just and we're just going to chop it up. So let them in there, follow them in, and me and Marsh will go back and yeah. forth. And I I think it just comes down to where can Cam be best effective? It's off the bench, 20 to 25 minutes. Let him have a high usage rate and let him just go get buckets because I'm going to be honest. R.J. Barrett is going to be featured in the starting lineup. Julius Randle is going to be featured, and so is Jalen Brunson. There's one basketball. I don't think, I don't think there's just enough opportunity. Sherwin says Grimes is not a 3 and D guy. Grimes is the best at pushing the ball on the roster. Um, well, he shot 40% from three as a rookie, and he's the best defender on the wing on the team. So I think that 
by default makes him a 3 and D player. But just because he can push the ball up the court doesn't mean he's not a 3 and D guy. I think sometimes when we say 3 and D, we think that means that narrows them into a box. But we saw in the summer league what he could do. We saw he could push the ball. We saw he could get downhill. We saw he could put the ball on the deck and get others involved. So sure, when I understand what you're saying, but I think he is the really only 3 and D guy on this roster. This is a great question from Big Al. Do you think this team can hold their leads better with Brunson as the point guard instead of Alec Burks as it was last year? Last year we blew a lot of leads and it looked a little confused at times. This is why bringing in Jalen Brunson, coming from winning cultures ever since high school. I grew up in the Chicagoland area. He went to Stevenson High School, two-time high school champ. He, he's, and then he went to Nova, two-time national champion there. I think he's a winner. I think you know that's how you kind of hold leads, and he kind of has that experience, um, unlike a guy like Alex Burke, Alec Burks that you had last year. But I do think, I mean, it has to get better. I mean, obviously I can't look into the future, but I think definitely with a true point, I think, you know, kind of that CP3 type, not exactly, but, you know, that type of true point that's kind of gone in today's NBA, I think Brunson could really help that out. What do you think? Yeah, and I think, I think you're, you're right on the money there, Seeps, because the Knicks, like Big L was talking about, I wish I had a Big L right now, but I think you're absolutely right in the sense that it will help because how many times have we seen the Knicks the past two seasons go into a fourth quarter where they were up 8, 10, 12 and the lead slowly starts to go away it's because the Knicks didn't have an offense they didn't have a closer it was throw Julius Randle the ball on the on the elbow let him jab step you to sleep and try to get a bucket that's not going to be the case anymore Jalen Brunson is a closer he's a guy that can get you buckets at a much more efficient clip than a guy like Julius Randle he's a winner he's a leader and he does everything right when it comes to trying to win basketball games and I think to answer this one final time Big L yes Julius or Jalen Brunson will help the Knicks finish games because that's what he is. He's a finisher and he's a winner, and that's what winners do. They close off games when you're up double digits with six points left, and we don't have to hear the defense chance because the game's cut to four. Great question, Big Al. Really good question. Yeah, this one coming in from Jamal Jones, kind of roasting um, our man Julius Randle a little bit. He said Randle already thinks he's a point guard, so him playing at small forward isn't a stretch for his whack ass. I think, see, Randle could play. The small forward easily if he shot 40% from three like he did in, what was it, the 2020-21 season. Yeah. But if he's shooting 30% like he did last season from three, you can't have three guys on the floor who can't shoot. You, yeah. It's hard to have two guys on the floor who can't shoot nowadays, NBA. But, yeah, I mean, Randall at I, the three I don't three think it tough. makes sense for Randall to play the three. I think he's a power forward through and through, especially in today's positionless basketball because he is a good rebounder. And I think it would be a clunky fit if he had Randall at the three – with also OB on the court, for example, and let's say Mitchell Robinson. It's all kind of a clunky fit. Randall has lost a lot of weight. I saw him at the Pro-Am game earlier this week. He's lost about 20 pounds. He looks super thin. I think he's going to come into camp into shape, but it's never about the athleticism or being in shape, in my opinion, with Julius Randall. It's up here, and it's up here. I question both of those things, and I wish I don't have to say things like that, but I really do. I question his motor. I question his heart. And I question his will to win. I think he wants to win, but I think he wants to win on his terms. And that is a big difference between doing anything it takes to win and wanting to win under your terms. Big difference. I don't know if Julius is that type of guy. There we go. Finesseful J. And he says, trade Randall for Isaac or MPJ. I'm assuming he's meaning Jonathan Isaac yeah. on the Magic. Um, the Magic and Nuggets hang up on you and probably block your number. Yeah, exactly. I mean... Was it Julius Randle? He's a he's one of those dudes where it's like if you're a contender, do you want to trade for a guy like him who's a little ball dominant? And then if you're rebuilding, it's like, do you want to bring in this guy who could stunt the growth of some of your younger guys? I mean, like Marsha said, I mean they would hang the phone up, I think, immediately on that. And that's like, and if you put up the stats of Jonathan Isaac and Julius Randle, it's probably you would be like, oh, Julius Randle has way more value on the trade market. It's just not the case in that. If he did have value, he wouldn't be on the Knicks anymore. They would have traded him. They've been taking calls on him since, since the deadline. If there was a trade out there that the Knicks liked for Julius Randle, they would have made it. I just don't think it's out there. Like, he really played himself into a, into a bad value across the NBA, guys. Like, a lot of people, and I know Sherwin, 
who always watches the show and is a real one, is a big fan of Julius Randle and says he's a top 14 player in the NBA. But if that was the case, Knicks would be able to trade him. Thing is, they can't trade him. Yeah, and also Julius last year, his attitude, that was a serious problem. So I'm sure teams are looking at like that. It's like, if this year does go wrong and Julius is just going to start pouting halfway through the year if it's not going his way, it's definitely something that's you know. On yeah, the if, like, if he has another season where he's toxic and he pouts and all that, then you then you dump him for nothing because he's a negative, a negative on your team. But I think the Knicks believe that last year was not a true representation of what Julius Randle is, and I think they're hoping that he can bounce back and up his trade value, and the Knicks trade him. Another one from Big L. Do you think like we should one. focus on Mitchell or just play the team we have until free agency? Both. Why can't you do both? You focus on Mitchell. Well, well, I like Monte's question, and I want to talk about that in a second. But you could do both. I think we should focus on Mitchell because he's a good player, and we need more good players. Like, it's that simple. He's an elite player, I would say, and we don't really have any elite players yet. I think Brunson is on the verge of being an elite player. I think he could take that step into being an elite point guard with him being the most ball-dominant player on a team. But as a job as a GM like Leon Rose, it's to collect the most talent, get the most elite players you can on a basketball team, and then you have your coach figure it out. So I think the Knicks will continue and have and should focus on a Mitchell trade. But if it doesn't happen, that's fine. Then just play with the youngins on this team and see what happens at the trade deadline. Maybe someone else becomes available. Because as we know, the Knicks have 22 picks, 11 first and 11 seconds over the next seven years. And they're not picking 22 players over the next seven years with already 10 players on this team under than 25. At some point, they will have to consolidate assets. It's not for Mitchell. It's going to be for the next guy that becomes available. Here we go. This one, a little project, a starting line of projection from Monty. Jalen Brunson at the one, R.J. Barrett at the two, Obi Toppin at the three, Julius Randle at the four, and Mitchell Robinson at the five. Marsh, I would love to hear your reaction. Yeah, so if this was the starting lineup rolled out, week, day, like opening lineup, this is the starting lineup. What are you thinking? I like it in theory because it's like, hey, we're getting all of our best players on the court. But Obi Toppin is not a knockdown shooter yet. R.J. Barrett has not proven to be a knockdown shooter. Julius Randle is not a knockdown shooter. And Mitchell Robinson is not a knockdown shooter. I think your spacing there is not good. I think, and that's a problem, because Jalen Brunson is coming from the Mavs, a team that ran a lot of five out on offense, which gave Julius uh, Jalen Brunson the opportunity to work inside the paint and dominate and do that fancy footwork that we've seen. So if you have Obi, Randall, and Mitchell Robinson on the court, I think the spacing is bad. You're too condensed. It's going to be a lot of people on top of each other. That's why I want Quentin Grimes at that small forward or shooting guard spot. He spaces the court out. He makes you guard that short corner. He's going to make you pay. Shot 40% as a rookie. I get the idea here, Monty, but I just think structurally, lineup-wise, and play style-wise, it's a little bit clunky. I would love OB to be an elite three-point shooter because then I think this has a better chance of working, but he has he's not there yet. I would like to see Randall and OB play more together, but I think that has to be a small ball lineup of them at the four and the five. Yeah, I'm looking at this right now. I'm imagining if you do put Donovan Mitchell, we'll just plug him in where RJ is, move OB. Oh, yeah, OB stays the same. Move RJ to the four, get Randall out of there. If you go Brunson, Mitchell, OB, R.J. Barrett, then Mitchell Robinson, that's a pretty damn good starting yeah, lineup. No, I, li a, I like the lineup of O.B., Mitch, Robinson, Donovan, Mitchell, Jalen, and R.J. That, that's what I want to roll with, but it sounds like that the Knicks are going to have to probably trade O.B., and that's, that sucks because I have high hopes for him. But, look, nothing's definitive. We talk about a lot of rumors and reports on this show because that's what we are. We're a news and rumors channel. Just because we talk about it doesn't mean it's my report. I don't really report anything. I react to reports, and I drive audience engagement because that's what we're about. A super chat from Stolen Harley. I hope you found it. No one actually stole it. But he said, I want to thank Chat Sports for your content. Nick's Now is lit. Best live chat on YouTube. Shout out to you, bro. Hashtag Nick's Tape. The Nick's Tape days were fun. $20 super. That means I have two shots. I have cleared out every shot from SB Gorilla, a.k.a. Silverback Gorilla. I've been taking them while Seeps has been talking, but I've been on screen for you to see. It, Hector, how many shots do I owe? 
I owe two for stolen. That's it. Yeah, Hector, Hector, you're going to be designated to the shot counter in the yeah, chat. Hector, that is, you that can't is, demand that is your me role. to take more shots, Hector, if you're only going to roll in with a $5 suit. And I don't mean to diminish the $5 suit, but you technically didn't even buy a shot. But since I'm a real one, Hector, I will take a shot for your $5 suit. So I have three shots to go, two for stolen, one for Heckle and Hector. Juan Suarez says, finish your milk. That was a so funny, man. So funny. What do we got here, Steves? We got a good one because uh, this was something that actually me and you were talking about before we got on here. Marsh and I were obviously, if you guys have been watching, we're pretty big RJ guys. We think he's pretty underrated. And we were talking about the hoop height list. And we, were, we originally kind of wanted to destroy it a little bit. We wanted to kind of say it was a I wanted, fraud I, list. I wanted to shit on that list so bad. So bad. But... We actually ended up agreeing with it pretty much. I would have – here, I'll throw the list up right now. Um, this one's for Hector since he sent in a $5 soup. If you send in a $10 soup, I'll take another one, Hector, because I'm a real one. Yeah, when we were looking here at the list, <laughs> I was maybe saying RJ – so pretty much the top nine. Like, RJ can't go ahead of Middleton, DeRozan, Ingram, yeah. Paul George. I think obviously. six, seven, eight, nine is set. That's set. You could have an – I think Wiggins – should probably be at the 10 spot, and that's pretty locked in. I like Wiggins over Bridges. I yeah. also like Middleton at 7 and move everyone yeah. else down. I like that too. But, you know, it comes where it's that OG, McCall, Michael Porter Jr., and RJ. Honestly, I, I would probably take RJ out of that group. I know McCall Bridges is coming off a very solid year, but he is also in a very solid system. Yeah. RJ last year was dealing with really not much around him and still put up great numbers. I mean, again, me and Marsh are huge RJ Barrett stat guys. I mean, they're incredible. But, uh, you know, I really think, like, this list is pretty solid. Like, I, I would take RJ over Michael Porter. In the long run, I think RJ can be a, a one or a two on a winning team compared to Michael Mikel Bridges. I think he's kind of a role player, a superstar role player. But I'm, I'm cool with this list. Like, I think 14 is fine. I would personally take him over Michael Porter Jr. I think Porter Jr. might have – a little bit more talent and a little bit more game, but if you only play in 125 games over the last four seasons, I can't judge you for stuff you don't do. Best ability is availability, and he hasn't really been that. So I'm cool with RJ at four. Let me know in the comments, though, where does RJ, in your opinion, rank amongst the top small forwards in the NBA? Hoops hype, they have him at 14. Off of this list, I'd probably move him to 13. I, I don't know if he's better than OG Wiggins or Mikel yet. I think he can be better. I think 13 or 14 is about the right spot, but I want to hear from you. Where would you rank RJ among the top small forwards in the NBA? Oh, and Hector, he joined the party. He didn't like me talking about his $5 super. He rolled in with the $10 super. Hector, I will drink two shots for you because I, I mocked you and you mocked me back, and that's what New Yorkers do. We talk shit and we don't get our feelings hurt because we're not soft. Hector, you're a freaking animal, man. Hector, talk about responding he when responded. somebody calls you out. Talk about showing up, hitting the bell. Marsh called you out a little bit, and you just said, Marsh, take it down a little bit. He said, bit. Marsh, ligma. That's what he told me. He told me to ligma. And, he, and, I, and, I, and I'm now going to have to drink two shots. Hector, you're a real one. Then we got another one oh, coming another in. another super from Sunny. Sunny STX. He says... My top three, KTV, KFTV, George, and Nick's now. Just to be in the conversation with my guy CP, CP the franchise, Nick's Fan TV, the best Nick's YouTube page out there. Shout out to you guys over there at KFTV. Also, shout out to Sonny. George also does a great job. I mean, just to be mentioned in the same breath as those guys who grind. Because, like, to be a content creator, you got to work hard, man. You, you, no days off. News comes. We put a video out. Rumors come out. We put a video out. We don't take days off. CP doesn't take days off. George doesn't take days off. Shout out to Sonny. Shout out to George. Shout out to CP. Shout out to all the real ones. Let's ride. I owe one more shot for you, uh, for uh, Hector. Don't, 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 don't. Uh... Can you still read? It's, it's definitely uh, getting a little blurry. I will not lie. I'm probably going to have to Uber home. Keith. My guy Keith is in the chat. He's a real one. Always see him in the chat. 
I think Keith's been around. Keith, when did you join the channel? Because I feel like I remember seeing you back when we had like 2,000 subs. Keith, let me know when you remember like what this channel was at sub-wise. But he says, I think that's why the outside media show RJ no media attention. It's because of the way Knicks fans, oh, no. I See, you know what? It's funny. I feel like I've been giving RJ Barrett a ton of love on this, and I've had Knicks fans actually calm me down <laughs> on my excitement over RJ Barrett. A lot of people don't like the efficiency by RJ, and that's okay. That's a, that's a reasonable excuse. 41% from the field, 34.5% from three. I'm not too concerned about the 345 because I've sh seen him shoot 40% from three, but... He was also 24th in a fit, or in a usage rate last year in the entire NBA. He was the youngest player on that list out of the top 25 in usage rate. He came in at 24th and was the youngest. And a use and usage rate normally dominated by guards. The fact that he was playing the wing last year and he was 24th in the league. That's 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 my without watching every single play of Knicks yeah. basketball last year. That would be my analysis, kind of saying usage rates usage rate goes up. Efficiency goes down. That's just that. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, I'm not too stressed about the RJ efficiency. Efficiency, I see it as a problem for sure. I think he needs to be more efficient. At the end of the day, he just played a season wrapping up where he was 21 years old. The fact that he was able to average 24 points per game in the second half of the season while shooting above 41%, I think is, a, is incredible. And the, like, the ability to just get off that many shots like, is incredible. Like, people don't take that into account. Like, it's hard for players to get that many shots up to get to your spot and get good looks off. RJ has to be more efficient. No one is going to not say he hasn't or needs to be. But I think he has all the intangibles. I think he's a winner. I think he's a hard worker. I think he's got that mentality to be a dog. I can't wait to see what he is when RJ is 27 years old. That's in five years. Think about that. We got a lot of bull bull. I don't know yeah, how this started. This bull yeah, bull what's up with the bull in bull the... in the chat? Are they we... Got... Yeah, someone says Bull Bull on my 2K Knicks team. Bull Bull is a cheat code in 2K because he's like seven foot eleven and he blocks shots, but he ain't he ain't an NBA player. He's a hell of a 2K player. Hell of a 2K. Hell guy. of a 2K player can shoot threes, handle the ball. I don't know about him too much in the league. Yeah, Big Bino. He says fans would love him, but whose spot he gonna take or back up? Um, I, I don't, I'm kind of un, unsure what he means. Do you know? I, I think he was talking about Bull Bull, maybe, okay. still. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah I just I don't mean, think Bull Bull. You already got Bull. Mitchell Robinson. You already got Hardenstein. You already got Jericho Sims. I'd go as far to say the Knicks have the best center rotation in the NBA. I mean, Jericho Sims is your third center is incredible. Um, not, no real room for a guy like Bull Bull, though. Bull Bull. Bull 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 Bull. If you say it, how many times in a row can you say Bull Bull, Bull, Bull before messing it up? Bull, 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 bull. All right. Stolen bull, Harley bull. back with another one. Thank you for the super chat earlier. I appreciate you. I do want to give an a, a update before we answer this. We are 55 likes away from another shot. We are $21 away from four more shots. So let's do it. Let's get to $200 in supers. I believe in you guys. And a little secret, the more effed up I get on this show, the later I get to come into work tomorrow. So if I get to sleep in tomorrow, that'd be really cool. So if someone just keeps dropping supers, that'd be dope. So I get to come into work late tomorrow and I get to Uber and I don't have to be here on time. Don't tell my boss. Here's another little secret. The more super chats that come in, the longer we talk about <laughs> Knicks, we talk about the NBA, we talk about RJ Barrett. Look, it's 545. We don't really get out of work till 630. I'm not really in the boat of doing anything else today at work except drinking and talking Knicks with you guys. This three-team trade. That Stolen Harley wanted to break down. Break it down. So, three-team deal with the Lakers has any weight where we get Spida and buy out Westbrook. So, the Knicks are getting Donovan Mitchell and Russell Westbrook and will eventually buy out Westbrook. And Julius Randle goes back to the Lakers. But you, and you still get to keep Obi and Jazz trade us a star guard and they get two back, IQ and Grimes. So, so I'm guessing, so Julius to the Lakers. The Jazz will get a ton of picks and IQ and Grimes, and we get Donovan Mitchell and then Westbrook, but we would eventually buy and out Westbrook. And a star guard? Like, I think yeah, who, you, you were on point until you said another star guard from the Jazz. Like, one, 
I don't think they have another star guard. I mean, Beasley is solid, but he's not a star. Um, yeah, we get throw JD Mism says throw Mel in that deal somehow. Yeah. Well, I want, well, he's a he's a free yeah, agent. He's a free agent. So I think if the Knicks trade, I I I have said this a couple times. Um, if the Knicks trade for Donovan Mitchell, I think they will go out and sign Carmelo Anthony. I think it's telling that Melo has not signed anywhere in the NBA, and he just averaged 13 and a half points per game last year on 26 minutes per night on good efficiency numbers. I think that's why is he still out there? It's because he wants to play for the Knicks, and he's waiting. So he said he meant Donovan Mitchell as a star guard. Okay, okay, Donovan Mitchell as a star guard. So the Knicks get Mitchell, buy out Westbrook. They trade IQ and Grimes and Randall and a bunch of picks, but they get to keep Obi. I'm cool with that. Like I, I mean, I am cool with that as long as you keep. You have to keep one of Obi and Grimes. I would want to keep Grimes over Obi, but I love both of them. So if you get to keep one, I'm cool with it. In a in a trade, you got to give to get. You're not getting Donovan Mitchell on a discount. You're dealing with Danny Ainge. He's going to try to take you for everything you got. But I also love that we have Leon the Don on our side. Type Leon the Don in the comment section because Leon Rose is changing the culture around the New York Knicks. Yeah, this is interesting for Monte. Melo to the Knicks, sixth man of the year. I don't know. See, when I imagine Melo coming back to the Knicks, yeah, coming off him, him coming off, off the, the bench. bench sure. Yes, 100%. But what I imagine, it's playoff time. Melo, he, he, he hasn't really done much the entire season. Playoff time comes around. It's the first round. You're matched up with the Atlanta Hawks. <laughs> Trey Young's back <laughs> in MSG. Trey yeah, Young yeah, in F, the yeah, comments. Put, it, put an F Trey Young just for why not in the comments. And then you – Mello spotting up corner, bangs a three. He's hitting the three to the dome. MSG's going crazy. That's what I think, Mello. He would be huge. Three-point goal, Carmelo. Like, I need that then, back in my life. This is what I need back in my life. Mello and D-Rose running the bench mob, giving me 2017 vibes. It is. I mean, the defense is a little bit sketchy if you think about it like that, but it would just be so fun to see Carmelo Anthony back with the New York Knicks, kind of a victory lap type of year to round out a Hall of Fame career. F. Trey Young, Leon the Don, get the comment section going. $21 away from $200 in soups. That's four shots. We came in here with half a bottle, and it's we're deleting this bottle. Every Super Chat equals a shout-out. $100 in supers equals four shots. Every $10 super chat equals a shot, and every 100 likes equals a shot as well. 251 likes, we're 49 likes away, $21 away from new milestones. Show some love if you can. If not, just like the video. It's another great way to support. Let's pop up those real one tees, because not a lot of you guys have gotten your real one t-shirts. But when I go in the comments section, I always see a lot of people typing real one. But you can't be a real one if you don't have a real one shirt. And I made my boss make t-shirts because I said, look, this is a movement on Knicks now. Well, there are a bunch of real ones. And I want to get these guys a shirt. So if you love the Knicks, you love Knicks now, and you just count yourself as a real one, get a shirt. Go to chatsports.com slash real Knicks. Link is in the comments and description of today's show. Everyone that gets a shirt, let me know somehow. Hit me up on Twitter at MarshallGreen underscore. If you send me a picture of you rocking this shirt, I will feature you on the show. Every picture that gets sent to me that someone is wearing this shirt, you will get up on the show. We'll put you in a cut. We'll put you on the video. That's right. Real ones stand up. Because I don't want to go to my boss and he say, yo, you only really sold 12 shirts. That's going to make me look bad. And I'm okay with looking bad, but I want you guys to be real ones and get your guys this shirt. Hey, Marsh, guess who said he's going to get a T-shirt? Rich Rob said he's <laughs> getting a T-shirt. We do have a super chat, though, from Reggie Jones, who puts us at $200 in super chats, which means four shots. Four shots. Let's ride. I sent Seeps MG a pick and they featured it. They real ones. We are real ones. The thing though, Rich Rob, is you're a real one. He says, I'm getting mine ASAP. You already know. I already thought you had one, Rich Rob. That's how much I think of you as a real one. But Reggie Jones, if you have a question, please ask it. I'd love to answer your question. In the meantime, 
I'm going to pour up a couple shots and we're going to get loose. Yeah, shout out to Reggie for the super chat. But Rich, I got to ask you something and maybe you could chime in. Where are you watching right now? Are you in the car? Are you, do you have us up on the Apple CarPlay right now? <laughs> that would be great. Rich Rob, you are an animal for that, and you're kind of like a chat sports office legend. I'm like, yo, Rich Rob, he's back watching Knicks now in his car. I don't know how safe it is, but I support it. Just, just drive safe for me, Rich Rob, because I can't have you getting into a little fender bender because you're watching Knicks now and you're watching us take shots. How much are them shirts? Go to the link, chatsports.com slash real Knicks. They are $27.00. Look, it's, 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 it's a tough time. I wish I could get you guys a free t-shirt. But it costs to be the boss. And if you want a real one shirt, we'll put the link in the chat. Let's do that. I'll put it in the chat right now. The link is in the chat to the real one shirts. Mine is in the mail. It is on the way. I cannot wait to wear it. I might. I might. I think it's going to be my new profile picture. It's going to be the real ones. Andrew said he's getting one. You're totally right. Real one's got the shirt. Getting one right now. Where's my card? Andrew. Good guy. Andrew gets it. Rich Nick's Rob. Galaxy also. Nick's Galaxy. I know Still he already got for one. His, oh, yeah. he, he bought one. He sent me a picture on Twitter. I retweeted him. I showed him love. Nick's Galaxy, you know what up, bro. You know you're a real one. I, you, I got your back and you got my back. That's how this works. I show love to all the real ones. And I want to give a shout out to my guy who just dropped a $20 super, which got us over $200 in supers. That's Reggie Jones, shot one of four. Let's ride. Monte says everyone should get a shirt. Look, I don't want to pressure anybody, but I don't really think, like I understand, look, it's, it's tough times. I save as much money as possible. So if, it, if it's hard, hard of finances, I understand that. But if you have the means to go and support Knicks now, and you also already throw real one in the comment section, can you really comment real one anymore if you didn't buy a shirt, Seeps? That's a great question, but I know Hector says count me in Hector on a real one t-shirt. Shirt. Hector, Let's go. Hector, you are officially a real one. I called you out, you answered the bell, and now you're getting a shirt. You know what? You know what would be awesome to start the next live show if we just had like 20 pictures of just Knicks fans wearing their real the one t-shirt. It's That's gonna be the awesome. Goal. I want to see awesome. as many as possible. Cause look, a sneak peek, guys. We may be doing post-game live shows, and I want to be able to feature you guys in the real one tees. And I'm gonna have my real one on, and I want to get you guys up on the screen and be like, Hector's a real one. Jamal's a real one. Monte's a real one. Nick's Galaxy's a real one. Rich Rob's a real one. JD Mism's a real one. Omar's a real one. Nathaniel, who said he's waiting for my real one shirt to come. Darren Gale is a real one. Darren Gale is a real one because you know why? He watches New York Knicks now and New York Giants now. Darren, we're going live for the preseason game this Thursday, youtube.com slash TV. If you like the Giants, subscribe, and we're going live on Thursday. It's going to be a freaking party. Darren, I hope you can be there. If not, I know Marshall is ripped like a weightlifter. Thing is, I'm not ripped. I, I, I got to get in shape. I, I need to get in shape. I, uh, I used to be, like, almost in shape, and now I'm not in shape because I fucking drink. I can't really say the F word, but I did already. Sorry. I drink Fireball all day. and Jamal, I need you on show drinking with me. That's what it is. He said, Jamal says, I'm copping mine so I can be on chat to drink with Marsh. Jamal, if you buy a shirt and you send it to me on Twitter or IG, it's at Marshall Green underscore, I will feature everybody that buys a shirt. Because here at New York Knicks Now, this show is all about you guys. We pride ourselves off audience interaction. If it wasn't for you guys, I'd just be a loser up on screen talking to a blank wall. That's not what we got. I think, I think Keith also said he's getting one, but I think it was last week. I think it was Rich Robinson who said we should get a huge Knicks Now section going to a Knicks Yes. Hands. Could you imagine 20 of us imagine rolling up in real in ones? Imagine garden rocking the, the real, real one ones t-shirt. T-shirt. Could you imagine you see that? You're watching TNT. You see somebody fifth row. They got their real one shirt on. It's going to be great. Uh, Jamal says, I'm a whole, Jamal, there's one thing about me. I am a real one and I'm a man of my word. If you want to drink on the show with me, 
send me a video and I will put you up on show. If you are drinking in a real one shirt and you take a video and put it, send it to me on IG, Twitter, I'll even give you my phone number if you buy a real one shirt. We'll put you up on screen. Fabian says, you can't say you ain't pressuring somebody, then say we ain't a real one. I, I, that was mean. I'm sorry. But he said he's getting one. He said he's getting one. <laughs> oh, I love Wednesdays. J.D. Mism, Let's put go. him up on screen. He just got his real one shirt. Jamal, you don't want to FaceTime with me, bro? Like, what about if it's after a bad Knicks loss and I need to talk with somebody about the Knicks? You're not there for me, Jamal? Come on. I'm just messing with you, bro. It's all in good fun. I know you're a real one. My guy Shaq. This is, this is a diehard. Shaq, this is Shaq a diehard. has been a real one for a while. I remember seeing his comments back when we were, like, at 1,000 a thousand subs and I haven't really seen him in live chats but he's here today he's always in the comment section he says 56 years a Nick I can't okay gotta let Grimes go why same position as Donovan and that's the goal Toppin keeps us productive at the four then we I I, I do not disagree with that mindset my guy um Shaq, I think you're right. I mean, you've seen more basketball than me in your life, and I'm going to de defer to someone that has the experience and the knowledge of a vet, especially someone, someone like you that's got a picture with Walt Clyde Frazier as their profile picture. That profile picture, that shit is wet, man. That shit is wet. Shaq, you're right, though. I, I get the idea of trading Grimes because he plays the same position, but I do think that you could close games with a lineup of Brunson, Mitchell, Grimes, RJ, and Mitchell Robinson. I think you could close games with that lineup. What do you think? Two guards and Mitchell and there's I mean there's definitely enough shooting and playmaking yeah, out like there for sure. RJ can be a small ball four. A lot of teams close Easy. games with small lineups. Yeah. I mean I got another shot for Reggie. The Warriors change the game completely when it comes to small I mean the Warriors are running six foot six Draymond at center. I exactly. mean you can really it's a positionless game now. But Quentin coming in with a super Quentin shit. Quentin got another one. He said, y'all got 4X for a brother piece. Gritty Guapo, too. Yeah. We might need to talk to Brett about the 4X. The shirts <laughs> only go up to 3X. Unfortunately, that's because of the site that we worked through through the third party. But you could get it and cut the sleeves off, and then it would fit. I think, you know what? If you are even thinking about buying a real one shirt, you're a real one. If the opportunity doesn't present itself, that's fine. Quentin, you just sent in $5 to ask me a question. You are officially a real one, whether you get the shirt or not. For that, I got mad love for you, bro. Nick's Galaxy says, we all get real ones hoodies. If these sell well, if the t-shirts sell well, the merch is endless. The opportunities are endless. So much more room for activities. What movie? If someone can name that movie, I will give you a shout out right now. Um, but yeah, Nick's Galaxy. Um, I know you already got your shirt. We'll check in the reports in about a week or two. If they sell well, I'll tell my boss we need hoodies. I think we could do that. This is something I want to kind of grasp what Nick's Nation is kind of feeling at this point. FD Mitch and Utah. Like, is that like is that a good? representation of how the Knicks fan base is feeling right now. Just these rumors have been going on for, I mean, what, six weeks, seven weeks now? Yeah. I mean, it's been a while. And I don't think Danny Ainge, sadly, I don't think he's going to, I don't think he's going to fold anytime soon. I mean, we know how he is with making deals. He's going to try to get every little Does thing he, he can. Does he start to feel the pressure, though, once training camp is a week away? Maybe. But I'm pretty sure, isn't the All-Star game in Utah this All -Star year? All-Star game is in Utah, and that's a rumor I've heard that they don't want to trade him because of that. But I would rebunk that by saying, why are you taking calls on him now, then? Yeah, and plus your value, I mean, what you're going to get from him after the All-Star game is not going to be as much as you could get from him right now. I think now. the value goes down every day, considering he has three years left on his deal now. And if you trade him next summer, he only has two years of security, and I think that kind of lowers his value a little bit. Yeah, I, I think Danny Ainge, I definitely think he'll wait this one out. I... I don't know if I had to give a prediction on when he'll get traded, but, I mean, yeah, it's definitely probably getting annoying for Knicks fans. I mean, just kind of wondering what your roster is going to look like. It's either the team with Donovan Mitchell or the team without it. Malik, um, like, I want to ask Knicks fans, too. This is a good question. Like, are you all tired of the Donovan Mitchell shows? Like, 
I think it's, and be honest with me in the comments section. You can, you can be honest. I'm here to take all responses. The show is, is for the fans. Uh, we, all, we base ourselves off audience interaction. So I want to know, are you guys tired of the Mitchell stuff? I feel like it's the number one story surrounding the Knicks, and my job is to talk about the most trending stories about the Knicks, and I do a lot of hard work by listening to podcasts and trying to find you guys quotes from people that are close to the sources. If you guys don't want to do any more Donovan Mitchell stuff, let me know. I'm cool with that. I just want to know what you guys want. If you're tired of it, let me know. Um, but I just feel like I'm kind of doing a disservice to the Knicks fans by not talking about the number one story. But and, and plus, there's been a there's there's been a new report like every yeah, other day new, with this. There's thing. new something every day. Like I feel like we would do, be doing you guys discredit by not talking about it. But I could understand as a viewer because sometimes, honestly, I get tired of talking about it. I want it to be over already. But I, I it's my job to get you guys the latest news and rumors, and that's what the Knicks news and rumors have been focused on. We've done more stuff than Donovan Mitchell, though. Like, no doubt about it. We covered the hell out of Summer League. We've covered the hell out of Jalen Brunson. We've talked about R.J. Barrett. We talk about Julius Randle. So it's not all that, but I understand if you guys are a little bit burnt out on it. So let me know how you feel in the comment section. Uh, you feel. And a lot of people in the comments also guessed Step Brothers right away. The first one was T.S., and then internal Knicks Optimist said it. And then Malik Bumgarner. You guys are real ones. And so is Silverback Gorilla. He said, are the T's made in tall? From what I've heard, uh, Silver, is that they do run a little bit small. So I would order a size up. It's what I heard. My shirt is not here yet. I've already bought one myself because I don't get one for free. I had to buy one because I'm a real one. So from what I've heard, Buy a size up if you haven't already. But tall? Do you mean like big and tall? Is that what he means? I, think, I mean, maybe like a, I don't know. Is there a tall? Like a, like like a, a tall extra, tee? Like, like a long, like a long one? Like a long one? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. See, are we bringing back early 2000s fashion right now with baggy and tees? and one tall tees? That would, that, that would be sweet. The baggy <laughs> shorts with the baggy real one t-shirt, that would be tough. Would be uh, tough. What I've heard is to order a size up, and I probably should have told you guys that off the jump. I'm shitty for that. I'm sorry. But I haven't got my shirt, so I can't give a definitive answer. I usually wear a large, but I think I'm going to get an XL because I'm a big body and I'm a growing boy. Ray Ray, the unworthy, he says... If it's Rose, hold, Rose holding up the deal, though, then that's just wild. I 100% agree with you, and I don't necessarily think that it's Rose holding up the deal. But the reports from Tony Jones, even though he called me out on Twitter, and then when I called him out for calling me out, he deleted his tweets because he's a fraud, and I was right. Um, but he has tapped in, and he said the Knicks are not willing to trade Derrick Rose. And if Derrick Rose is the holdup, that's bullshit. Like, it just is. Hey, Marsh, you want to check your Instagram real quick, and I'll take over this? Our boy Rich, I think, has a surprise for you. <laughs> I think Rich has uh, something dialed up. But, yeah, Ray Ray, uh, we were actually talking about this before we got on. Like, if D. Rose is the reason, and listen, I'm a Chicago Bulls fan. If D. Rose is the reason this is being held up, I just think that's, I don't know if, like, naive is the right word. It's just, it's just stupid, in my opinion. I mean, D. Rose – great guy but like if you're looking at just this upcoming year d rose he was coming on a little of a he had a step back last year he got injured again and i know these injuries we can talk about d rose's injuries all day long they just keep on piling up and i do think with d rose like yes he could be a great piece off the bench in the postseason but if you could bring in donovan mitchell and he's d rose is just kind of an extra guy the jazz want i really don't see why you wouldn't um, but Big L, uh, this is actually, we'll get to this right now. Big L says, I just think this is one of our deepest Knicks teams in a long time without Mitchell. I really, in my heart of hearts, want to see what this team can do without Mitchell, then make a decision. That's a, that's actually a great point, And it's something that maybe we haven't given enough thought to is the young guys. I mean, Marsh and I were huge RJ Barrett guys. We've been talking about him, but after what I've seen from IQ this off season, and where he could develop, Big L, I kind of get what you're saying, where if you could just kind of wait this year, see if, I mean, let's just say RJ takes a huge leap this year and he ends up being a top 25 guy in the league. Jalen Brunson's probably around that top 25, top 30 guy in the league. 
and then you have another guy like Emmanuel quickly step up. You get a contribution from Quentin Grimes. These young guys start developing. And shout out to Leon Rose because honestly, he's really put together a solid Knicks roster. And I know guys on ESPN, guys on Fox Sports, they won't really give the Leon Rose the credit, but they have a ton of assets with the draft picks, young players, and I think it's 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 a tough decision, Big L, because you could get somebody who's already solidified in Donovan Mitchell, or you can see what these young pieces where they could turn into. It's it's something. Great job. Pull, pull, I put a picture in there in the graphics. See if uh, see if you can pull up that photo. Big L, I think Seeps did a great job of breaking that down. Um, but I want to give a shout out to my guy Rich Rob who is rolling around the city with Knicks now on in the car. Rich Rob. Holy, like, is this safe? Should I be concerned? This No, because he's a freaking real one. It looks like he's in a little traffic right now. So, bumper you know, bumper. Yeah, bumper the bumper is fine. It's not like he's ripping it on the highway right now. But this, I mean, this is awesome. Knicks fans, what do we think about this? Rich Rob, he's in the chat. What do we think about him watching Nick's now live in the car. Yeah, show some, show some love to Rich Rob because this is, I mean, this is only, only Knicks fans. That's, like, that's what I'll say. Only Knicks fans. You're coming home from work. You're like, you know what? I need to know what the hell is going on at Nick's now. I'm throwing this on right away. Apple CarPlay in the car. <laughs> it's, I love it. Is he I love pushing it. a BMW? Is that a BMW? That's what uh, Sonny says. He's in a BMW. Go Rich, go. Another super chat. <laughs> Silverback Gorilla, you have me dead, bro. He sent in a four, uh, $5 super. He said he's 6'5", 270. He said need tall, not M1 mixtape tall tees. That ish is played, LOL. And I will take a shot and send a video. If you do, you're a real one. It... it, it <laughs> I would say go go with the two X, maybe the three X. Like <laughs> I go three, I go three X. Three X, six five, yeah, six five. I, go I think you can go three X, SB. I think you fit that. I don't know what you look like, but I I think you fit that. Well, even if you don't wear it, like. And hey, SB, cut the sleeves off that thing. That could be your workout shirt. <laughs> exactly. That could be your summer like, shirt. Cut, cut like, it out to where it like goes down to like right here, you know. Oh like yeah. You did in high school when you were kind of swole. <laughs> It's like, I lift weights. I yeah. do this. <laughs> Rock a cutoff of the real one shirt. That'd be great. Oh my. Rich, Rich Rob. I'm BMW. He says BMW. He, of course he he's firm. rocking a BMW. He's a classy guy. Rich Rob, he keeps these themes wet, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, man. All right. 268 likes. We are 32 likes away from 300. We're at, we're at two... We have more likes than people watching. <laughs> that is kind of a problem. But 266 live, and we're two hours and nine minutes in. Look, I, I, I'm thirsty at this point. 100 plus. The audience is interchanging, but the thing is, the real ones are still here. In Jamal, in Sonny, in Ray Ray, in Rickster. And Jay Deals, and Jamal, and Brennan, and Hector, and Rich Rob, and Keith, and Sonny, and Brennan, and Big Dino, and Darren, and Jamal, and JD, and Rob Rob, and Juan, and Nick's Galaxy, and look at Mel, though, and Andrew, and Jay Deals. The real ones are here, and that's what we do the show for. We do it for the real ones, not the phonies, the people that, you know, tap out halfway through. We stay here for the people that are here all the way. 22 likes away from 300 likes which equals a shot. We're $89 away from 300 and supers. That's going to be tough to get to unless Jason or, or Jason B pops in here. I don't know where Jason is today. I'm going to take a shot, though, just because I'm thirsty and you guys have earned it. Also, I saw this. Rich, he says, I'm a red light real one. That's a great, that's a red. great, like, <laughs> alternate T-shirt. Just Rich Rob, red light, real one, watching in the car. It's, it's, it's fantastic. That reminds me of that Future song, running through the red lights, speed and looking through the rear view. Shout out to Future. He's a goat. Shout out to Future. 
I got, I got a, uh, someone just tweeted me from Sincere1747, and my phone, I think, just died. No, it's not. It's good. We're good. My phone is old, and it stinks. It's not good. I think I've had this phone for four years. Mm-mm. No. No. It... Yeah, my, we switched servers. We switched. We went. We switched over to Mint Mobile, and it was off for a day. Remember? Sin City. Oh, we gotta put this on the show. Sin City said, "Rich Rob, you ain't the only one." Oh, um, you guys better be safe driving around. That. That's all I gotta say. I swear, if we're encouraging people to throw Do in not, now, I am not encouraging alive. people to drive and watch the show. Bing bong. <laughs> Tom. It, this is, this is, I don't know if I'm okay to push this, but Sin City, your tweets always crack me up. I love seeing you in Twitter spaces. I've been trying to talk in Twitter spaces recently, but like everyone tells me my audio sucks. So I think it's my phone. Like I've tried it with my AirPods and I've tried talking through the phone and it just doesn't work. I just popped in a photo in there, Seeps, if you want to pop that up. This is the stuff that just gets me up in the morning. Like, this is, how this can is what I not love what I do for a job <laughs> if people are driving around this city watching New York Knicks now? Sin City, give them a follow on Twitter. It's S-I-N-3-I-T-Y. S-I-N-3-I-T-Y. I just retweeted him. I uh, just retweeted him. So if you go to my profile, that's another way to give him a follow. Sin City. Shout out to you, bro. Three to the dome. Let's ride. That's hilarious. No, yeah. I'm Monte says, low, that's dope. Yeah, that's... I mean, we got two dudes watching our car play right now. We got... Oh, Juan says, I listen to y'all in my car on the way home from work, too. I love it. I love the ones that listen to Knicks now on the way home from work. But we have a super chat. Oh, another super. He says, the shirt is nice, but where'd you get the hoodie? I'm going to be honest... I do not know. I got this hoodie, I want to say like three Christmases ago. My parents got me this. I couldn't tell you where they got it from, my guy. Um, I love it, though. It's, just, it's literally a basic hoodie. It's the highlighter orange Knicks with the Knicks logo. I've had it for a while. I don't know where I got it, though, bro. Um, yeah, but... Like we talked about with Knicks Galaxy, if these Knicks Real One shirts continue to sell out, we're going to make hoodies. We're going to make more gear and more gear. Patrick, shout out to you. I'm taking a shot for every every super chat that comes in the rest of the way equals a shot. Yeah, I'll, t I'll, take, one. I'll take one for Patrick just because you have a hell of a name. Hell of a name, a hell Patrick. Of a name. Hell of a name. Were you, were you Black Cup? My boy Seeps, a.k.a. Patrick, is taking a shot for Patrick Cison. Very close. P.S. We got two P.S.'s. Is Seahawks live over? It is. You know what happens? The real ones are never over. Let's roll. Tyler Jones, come in here. It's a tradition. Put us full screen here, Seepy. What's the tradition? Tyler Jones on the past two. New York Knicks Now Lives, a.k.a. Knicks Live, has taken a boot to the dome. And by boot, put, push it across. Three beers is in a boot. Seeps just took a shot for Patrick. If someone sends in a $25 super chat, Tyler Jones is doing the boot. That's three beers chugged to the head. Jonesy... You're up. Someone drop a $25 super. I want to see this guy so, throw back some boots. He so just finished week, his first live show. The floor is yours, Jonesy. We had a lot of fun on uh, Seahawks Live. <laughs> <laughs> Great time. But nonetheless, uh, last week we did, what was it, a 16 seconds? He boot. chugged three beers in 16 seconds. I'm feeling like I could beat that today. If he doesn't beat it, he might have to do another one. I don't know about that. I don't either, but I make the rules on Nick's Live. All right, $25 <laughs> Super Chat. 
and Tyler Jones is taking a boot to the dome what? on Nick's live. What do we have to get in super chats for you to chug the rest of this fire? Uh, thousand dollars, thousand dollars super chat, and I will drink the rest right, of that fireball. Twenty-five dollars super chat, three beers chugged in a boot. If you've seen Beer Fest, it's literally a boot that holds beer. Three of them. He will drink it. I I will just someone do it because I want to freaking see it. It's hilarious. Did we get another soup? How many games into another soup from Jay Deals? Dylan. <laughs> we just had a Philadelphia fan come in here, and I don't know what he said, but he said that Knicks fans are pussies, and he said if we send in a ten dollar super chat, he's gonna he's gonna shotgun a beer. Ten dollar super chat, wait, and he shotgun. Wait, a beer. hold on, I actually have him in my ear. He said five dollar super <laughs> chat, a five dollar super $50 chat. Fifty dollars for Philadelphia. Let's get this Philly fuck drunk. Let's ride. Let's ride. $50 super, we'll do a shotgun, and $25 super, we'll do three beers to the head, Tyler Jones style, a.k.a. Seahawks Live. But we did get this super chat we from did, Dylan. We did get a real super chat from Dylan Rodriguez, a real one from Jump Off the Rip. If you know, you know. Shout out to Chinsky. How many games until our fans start booing? If we lose game one, the Knicks fans will boo. That's what makes Knicks fans the best fans in the world. No matter if it's game one or game 82 and we're 81 and 0. If we look bad and the effort's not there, Knicks fans will boo you. That is a fact of life. So how many games? It could be game one if the Knicks fall down by 15 or 20 in the first half. You'll hear it from the Madison Square Garden rafters. Boo! We also have another real one joining. Astro is off the chain. Just said he ordered his Astro, real where, one shirt. Astro, where have you been? You were here oh. last week. You were dropping the super chats. And I, I need some help, Astro. $25 in a super. Tyler Jones Live is going to have to shotgun or soup, beer boot three beers. Dylan Rodriguez, I hope I answered your question right, but I think you already knew. Knicks fall down by 20 in game one. We're going to start booing them. That's what Knicks fans do. Yeah, we got a good question for you, Marsh. How do you see Jericho Sims oh. impacting this season? And Charles. Oh! <laughs> fill that boot up, Jonesy. Charles, <laughs> Charles said he's ready to see the boot. Type boot in the chat. Boot, 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 boot. Boot, boot, get that boot, boot, boot ready for boot. Jonesy. Ah! <laughs> You're about to see a man. <laughs> hey, KD. Don't you wish you came to the Knicks? Hey, KD. You guys. Jungle boot. boot. Jungle boot. Do you want us to throw liquor in the boot? If someone sends in a $20 super chat right now, we will put liquor in the boot. Hey, we call that a jungle boot around here. A jungle boot. You guys are about to see a grown man down three beers in less than 20 oh, seconds. I hope, you guys, I hope you guys are ready for this. Orlando Martinez says, where's the Bacardi at? That was actually my drink in college. Shout out to you, Orlando. Bacardi Dragonberry flavor. Kind of a chick drink, but it's what, fantastic. What liquor is Bacardi? It's a white rum. White or rum. I guess you could get it. The one I had was a white rum. It okay. was pretty damn good. But you guys are about to see some history right now. Tyler Jones could be going for 15 seconds. He Three said beers. if he doesn't beat the record, he has to do another boot. And by him saying that, I mean I said that. <laughs> Until he beats the record. Because right now, I, 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 I got the record on Nick's live of 15, se 15 seconds. Patrick Seatman, producer of today's show, type a PS in the comments. Okay, that's what I thought. Huh. Um... Oh, sex bots are in the chat. Type B. Sex bots are in the chat. F Philly. Type F Philly in the chat to block the sex bots. Type F B uh, Philly in the sex in the chat to block the sex bots. Oh, jungle boot! Jungle boot! Jungle boot! Jungle boot! Chase also has the shotgun because Stolen Harley said this. Jungle Petey, make sure that's a jungle boot. Uh, <laughs> I 
KD! Don't you wish you came to the Knicks? <laughs> jungle boot! They paid another 20 for the jungle boot! Tom, make sure that's a jungle boot! Jungle boot that piece! Let's ride! F Philly! Type F, F Philly, Philly in, in the, the chat. chat to block the bots! F Philly in the chat to block the bots! Chase Sr. came in here talking a lot of smack the Knicks fans. He did. He did. He pretty much called us cats with a P, if you know what I'm saying. He called us some cats. Whoo! That better be a jungle boot, Jonesy. But this is the one from Charles, the jungle boot. Did you say $20? Boom! Charles, pommels, four, three. Yes! He holds the jungle boot. That is three beers and Jack Daniels. Three beers and Jack Daniels. Look at this. Jack Daniels and three beers. We call this a jungle boot. A jungle boot. Top it off. Top it off. Top it off. Top it off. <laughs> Let's ride. This is Jonesy. Get your ass over here. To the dome, Jonesy. Get that timer out. Get the timer out. Everyone type Tyler Jones. Summer of Jones in the chat. Summer of Jones in the chat. Hey. Oh, a $50 super. Make that two boots. I bought my RJ Barrett jersey. Seeps, that's you. Seeps owes a boot. Seeps owes a boot. Oh, 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 Jungle boot, jungle boot, jungle boot. <laughs> Jonesy, hold on. Before we get this, but yes, get Big L super chat up. I will get Big L some love because. I'm not mixing in this. Oh my God, I'm sweating. Oh, and another ten dollar super from Brian Ortiz. All right. Big L says, make it two boots. I bought my RJ jersey at the Knicks-Nets game last year. Put me on the ROH list. RJ is a real one. Big L, I'm not even on screen. Big L, wish I had the Big L. He is going to be on the Super Chat Hall of Fame. Jonesy, let's go full screen here. We'll get the timer out. Jonesy said he could do a beer boot. In three or how many seconds? 16 is the record. 16 seconds. And if he doesn't beat it, he has to do another one. Are we ready? Okay. I will press it once he puts glass to lips. All right. Three. <laughs> <laughs> three, two, one. All right. He's got to beat 16 seconds or he's got to do another one. Type boot in the chat. Boot, 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 boot. He ain't doing it. Someone get him another boot because he ain't doing No, no, no. 20 seconds. Feel that piece up because he's got another one. He's got another one. We do have another boot. This is for my, he said F. The Knicks. No, I, I'm just I was just kidding. He loves the Knicks. I started this <laughs> he loves the Knicks. I will say this, though. I will bet this. If you can shotgun faster than Chase Sr., I will start the next New York Knicks Now video with your picture on screen. That's how confident I am. He is the best shotgunner on this side of the Mississippi. On the crack. On the crack. No, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I stopped it a little early. I stopped it. That was less than three. That was less than three. I did it at 1.3, and I stopped it late. That, if he does another one, another $50 another super. 50s, I got you. I, and that's on me. I may send you 10 on Venmo as a refund because I didn't press it right. <laughs> Who's taking that second boot for, for Big L? It, I think it's Seeps. I, I owe like 10 shots.
No jungle boot. No jungle boot. Let's ride. Nick's nation is is in full effect once again. Bing bong. Nick's country. Let's ride. I I owe five shots. Five shots. Here's one. We'll let the foam come down. Did you know if you wipe your sweat and then go around the rim on the inside? I swear to God. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I learned that in Florida when I was a kid. I swear to God. It, it's sweatish nose grease. Wow, great Jonesy's boot. I give that a C because that sucked. <laughs> You've done way better. <laughs> it did have liquor in the boot. It was a jungle boot. <laughs> a C plus, a C plus. It was three beers and Jack Daniels. That sounds terrible. I don't drink beer because I only drink liquor. And I like free liquor, and this is free liquor. So that's what we're drinking. But seeps, the foam is going down whenever you're ready. Stop, watch out. You don't have to beat any records. But he's going for the record. He doesn't have to. When, when it touches his lips, let me make sure I actually press the start. Okay, there we go. I've got it figured out. Little, little thumb action. Patrick Seatman, type boot in the chat. Boot in the chat. Whenever he goes glass to lips, This is for D Rose and Tibbs. And this is for D Rose and Tibbs. For Taj getting cut earlier this year. Yeah, this that that good. hurt a little bit. Here we go. Here we go for Taj. Clock started. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi. Three Mississippi. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen, eight. Does that, does that, I think that counts. I think that counts. No good. Does this count? No good. Let me know. He damn near did it. He did that in 14 freaking seconds. I got your back, Seeps. I got your back. Real ones got your back. Does that count? Does this count? 14. Damn Day says, nah, that don't count. Sonny says, nope. Carl is in the chat. Carl, where have you been? Jamal said it counts. Tricky Nick, let's talk. Nick says, that's more than an ounce. That is like nothing, guys. Oh, seeps. <laughs> did that? No, no, it did not. <laughs> Seeps, I think that counts. Big L says no, and he's sent in the super, so he, I think he gets final vote. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Go put that out there. Put that out there, seriously. Because I don't think she changes this, the ones in here. <laughs> Big L says just missed. Tav Tavon, Tavon says that counts. He said one sip with left with time on the clock. No. Tell I, him what you're I, feeling. I, tell him what you just did. <laughs> well, also, what I just did, uh, I just had to pull a trick to get back on here. But uh, I'm going to say it doesn't count, though. Um, personally, I just, you know, I'm a little disappointed in myself. I pulled up at the two-yard line right there. I had it. I had the 14. You had the record, bro. I had, well, I had my own record. Yes, you were going to set the record. I had F15 originally. I had a chance. Someone to said if it fits in a shot glass, it counts. I think it does. Okay. You want to see if it fits in a shot glass? Let's see. Let's go. We'll go by that. If Andrew if said if it glass, fits it in a shot glass, it counts. Let's see. The suspense is building. The suspense. You're running out of real estate. Does it fit in a shot glass, Andrew? That is how much is left after a shot. I think that counts. 
So I was a shot of beer and a little. He was a shot and a quarter short. Okay. Hey, next week. 1484. Next week, I'll be I think we have to round up. I'll what was your previous record? It was like 15 something, so. Dog, you had it. I know, I had it. Hey, Nick's Live has seen two of my all time performances when it comes to a boot, so. Wow. Pop up that Brian Ortiz super. He says Space Jam or Above the Rim. What is Above the Rim? Am I, am I being an idiot here? I know that, but what is that? I'm going to bang down a couple shots right here. We're five likes away from 300 likes. Hit the like button. That equals another shot. I owe you guys four shots. If we get to 300 likes, it turns into five. I actually don't. Oh, we'll push this across. I'm actually not familiar with Above the Rim, but... What is two, it? It's, it was a movie with Tupac. Oh, I don't know if I've seen that. I don't know if I've seen that. You, you might have just given me something to watch, Brian. I'm not going to lie to you. You might have just given me another basketball movie. I think Space Jam is my all-time favorite basketball movie, and my second is Coach Carter. Great. And my third, I like Love and Basketball. I think it's Love a great movie. Love and Basketball is a good movie. That's a, that's a feel-good movie. 300 likes, so I owe you guys five shots at this point now. Here. I'll, I'll take one to take some off your you're, you're good. You just did a whole boot. Unless you're ready. Huh, that's one. Bartender Marsh is at it. Wow. We saw we just saw six beers get deleted. I'm dead that Jonesy did a jungle boot. <laughs> this man drank three beers to the head with liquor in there. Lord to the real ones. The real ones. But this is this is to everybody who bought a T-shirt today. This everybody is to everybody that bought a T-shirt. Also, shout out to the people watching with their Apple CarPlay. That's for you guys, too. This is just Only real. Knicks fans would do that. Only Knicks fans. Cheers. Woo! Hell of a show, guys. Hell, Hell of, a, of show. a show today. Before we started the show, I'm going to be honest. I said, I don't know what the audience is going to be like. And... You guys, once again, passed my expectations. Every week I come into this show and I say, man, I hope this can do better than the last one. And every time you guys answer the bell, it's honestly incredible. Thank you to all of you for everyone that tunes into every single New York Knicks Now video. It's incredible. It's The support is, I, I wasn't ready for this support, honestly. Like the guys that hit me up on Twitter every day, send me DMs, like ask me questions and Say I'm the GOAT and I'm the best. Like, no, it's, it's you guys. It's the fans. It's Knicks fans. We're the best fans in the world, and we deserve good content. Knicks fans are real ones. You know, and the best part about this, you guys are dictating the show. Like, that's what I think is so cool about this. You guys give us what we want to talk about after we get through the segments and everything. It's all on you guys. And $330 in revenue, that's, that's incredible. That's, I mean, that's just a shout-out to all the Knicks fans, man. And this is, we're not even at the season yet. And we already got all this hype. Could you imagine that live show when Donovan Mitchell gets traded? When the traded? Knicks trade for Donovan Mitchell, you guys betty, better be freaking ready to party. Because if you thought today was a party, it is not even going to be close to what happens when Donovan Mitchell gets traded to the New York Knicks. Orlando says, thank you guys. Keep up the great work. Jay Deal says, drink milk after drinking and before bed alleviates hangovers. I don't really drink milk anymore. I got a really sensitive stomach. Um, I'm not lactose intolerant, but milk just doesn't sit right with me. Yeah, Orlando, thank you guys for the guys. I think you just said this, but you guys are the real ones. You're the real ones, really. Astro says, I'm in my tractor listening. Oh, what does that even mean? Are you doing Astro, yard work and you're listening to Knicks now? Astro, if you could get us proof of this, that, I mean, this would be incredible. Astro, if you proof. send a picture, send it to me on Twitter. I will put it on the show right now, at Marshall Green underscore, or on Instagram, at Marshall Green underscore. I will send you, or I will put you up on the show. B 
Big L says, you guys rock. You guys are the real ones. Big L, you're a real one. You're now in the super chat ring of honor after that 50 ball. It's an elite club. You knock somebody out. Someone's going to be upset, but they're going to have to answer the bell. That's the thing about this. Your spot's not forever. You got to earn it every day. Someone says, Betty better be ready. Laugh my ass off. It's real. If you think the liquor we're drinking is fake, you're, you don't deserve to watch this show. You guys Ray Ray says, Marshall's pronunciation of words, or pronunciation of words, <laughs> and even mine has taken a little step back. It's not as good as it was yeah. two and a half hours yeah, two ago. Two and a half hours ago, we were on our A game. Um, he says, someone says, any idea on Sims impact? Did we not already talk about that? Or did it, did, I think we got cucked by the super chats. Ray Ray, I'm sorry. He says impact on Sim, or Sims impact this year. I think he's going to be a bench big. He's going to come off. He's going to give you energy. He's going to give you rebounding, give you lob threats, give you guys from the dunker spot, high field goal percentage. He's going to be competing, though, every night with Hartenstein to get those extended minutes as the backup big. I think they're two different players. Hartenstein is a playmaker and someone that can shoot a little bit from outside, whereas Jericho Sims is your prototypical center where he's a dunker spot guy and an alley-oop threat and a pick-and-roll guy. If you got to do, go ahead, Petey. There's no reason for you to be here. Yes, Astral, send me a picture at Marshall Green underscore. I will put the picture of you in your tractor watching New York Knicks Please now. Please send that Astral. That would, I mean, that would be fantastic. Pretzels? I, pretzels are a snack that I would never buy at the store, but when someone has them, I want them. Like it's like peanut M and M's. I would never buy peanut M and M's. But when someone like opens up that yellow pack, it's like, yo, bro, give me some. Jeremy, you're a Knicks fan. Come here. Oh, yeah. Listen, this is, Jeremy's one of the biggest Knicks fans. What do you guys say about what's going on with the Knicks right now? Uh, I mean, I think it's a young resurgence, you know? And it depends on if you trade or not, what, what the outlook of this season will be. But if no trade happens, if the roster is as it is right now, I think you've got to be looking at – what can we get out of Obi Toppin? Can he be the stretch four that we want him to be? If not, you got to figure that out this season. Two, the R.J. Barrett maturation process. Can he be that guy? Can he be a number one on a championship Knicks title contender? Yeah. And then number two, who are the shooters on this team? You know, like who, who are going to be the snipers from the outside that are going to take R.J. Barrett to the next level because he's really good at penetrating. He's really good at getting the biscuit to the basket. But can somebody be there in the corner that he can dish it off to, get a quick three-point look? we got to see Should that this Knicks season. Should trade for Donovan Mitchell? I like, I like Donovan Mitchell. The only thing that worries, about, worries me about that is the defense with him and Jalen Brunson in the backcourt. Besides that, the scoring is going to be unmatched. They're going to be one of the best scoring duos in the league. Uh, for backcourt. As Th that, thoughts as on that. Julius Randle? Julius Randle? I mean, I think immature. He, he's talented. He, he can be a great player, but I think just the maturity is not there. And it, it, it's, it sucks to say that but for a guy who's been in the league, what, six or seven years. Like, if you can't be within your team huddle during a timeout, like, you're a kid. Like, come on. Phony. Phony, exactly. You ain't need no chops. Either. Exactly. He, he, he's never been to the bodega. He's never been to the bodega. That's what, and that's all I got to say. Jeremy Chugs from the corner, wet. That was, that was fantastic. That, that was, was a great breakdown. Right there. That was a great breakdown. Coming out of the bullpen, out of nowhere. Just broke Omar out. Sanchez says we're sipping apple juice. I might block you for the ch from the channel. Like, like, imagine being at your house and being like, these guys are drinking apple juice. Like, you sound so fun at parties. Like, you are the guy that everyone wants to talk to at the parties. Loser. Richard Hazelwood says, take another shot. I will, but we have a super chat menu, and we can pop that up. And someone says, OMG, please, D. Mitch will not help us. He plays no D. Please stop it. Jamal... He will help us. He will make us a better team, but there's definitely question marks about the defensive end. But Omar, every super chat equals a shout-out. 
Every $10 super chat equals a fireball shot. Every $100 in supers equals four fireball shots. We are $70 away from getting to $400 in super chats. I don't know what's going to happen if we get to if we get a $70 super chat. You will take your shirt off. If we get a $70 super another, chat, it will be another shotgun. way. Chase Sr. said he will do another shotgun for a $70 super. This time you're going to time it right. This time I will have to time it right. I don't know what happened there. Hans says he's, I'm a new subscriber. Please give me a shout out. Hans, there's your shout out. $10 soups equals a fireball shot. We are 70, uh, $70 away. $70 away from $400 in soups. Let me check something real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Give me a sec. Seeps, if you want to answer some questions, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so we got Brightest Future. He's been, he seems like he's in the camp of, I'm keeping the farm instead of trading for Donovan Mitchell. Which is kind of, you know, honestly, after hearing a lot of what the Knicks fans have to say today, it's, I really haven't given that a lot of thought, but honestly, with guys like IQ, Obi still developing, it's definitely not the worst thing in the world if you don't trade for Donovan Mitchell, but I don't think you can kind of get over that hump without Donovan Mitchell. I mean, if you keep the roster at it, as it is right now, obviously, we can't really predict who will develop and who won't, but uh, I do think um, if you do keep the farm, there's a Ton. There's a ton to look forward to in this upcoming season. And Marshall will be breaking down after every couple games, talking about Obi Toppin, how he's developing, well, talking about talking. Quigley, how he's developing, and I think it, it could be a lot of fun. So I just went and looked at last week's live stream. Last week we got $370 in supers. We are 330 right now. We have to beat last week. Like... So it's ten bucks. Is that, yeah, that should be saying. ten. Ten bones. No, no, no. Three seventy last week. Seventy. Okay. Three seventy last week. Three thirty today. We are forty bucks away from beating last week's live stream in supers, and we had less audience today, and that's okay because it's August. Not really a lot to talk about, but we get you guys a video every single day. I would love to beat last week's show, and that's a problem. Let's go. Hey, everyone, I want everyone to introduce everyone to Coop right here. What's up, guys? And I Thanks want everyone to, to type LOL Coop in the chat because he is a Mavs fan, and Jalen Brunson left the Mavs for the Knicks. Hey, LOL Coop in the chat. We had no chance. <laughs> Hired his dad. I love this guy. Coop is a real one, no doubt about it. Love y'all. Knicks Nation, there's only one nation. There's only one nation, and it's the Knicks. Coop is a great sport. We always go back and forth about Brunson, and I like teasing him. But they made it to the Western Conference Finals, and we didn't, so he usually gets the last laugh. But LOL Coop from Webb. LOL from Fabian. Ekrom says LOL Coop. Ron says LOL Coop. Charles, I think you're 100% right. He said if we're selling the farm... It would have already happened. You're right. We're not selling the farm because if we did, like you said, it already would have happened. The Knicks are not going to sell the farm for uh, Donovan Mitchell. They are going to be strategic. They want to keep as many young guys as they can, but they're willing to give up the picks. So they're not selling the farm. And, and, and the idea of that, and I'm not even going to go off to the tangent again because it pissed me off last week and I feel like I was delivering some great takes. This ain't the Carmelo Anthony trade. If you think it is, you're being lazy. We were uh, kind of talking about this earlier, Omar, but he says, how good will Brunson close game? Um, the Knicks, that was their problem last year, closing games. You have a lead going in the fourth quarter, you let it go. And I think Jalen Brunson, like <clears throat> one of the teams, when they start to go on runs, to have a guy, point guard, give me the ball. Hey, Mitchell Robinson, come here. Let's run a quick pick and roll. It's either going to be a lob to the rim. Jalen Brunson, a nice little pull-up midi he has in the lane, or it could be a kick out to a wide open three. I think that's why having like a true traditional point guard when the other team, because basketball is kind of the old saying, it's a game of runs, especially in the NBA now, teams can just pour on threes left and right. Having a guy like Jalen Brunson to kind of just say, everybody relax. Exactly. Give me the ball. I've been here before. Let me run a really solid set. Let me get a really high quality shot. And I think just even adding him will just, 
I mean, compared to Alec Burks last year running the show, it's going to be a totally different vibe at the end of the game. And I think Jalen Brunson, kind of like similar to a quarterback in the NFL, when you're getting in that huddle and you have Brady telling you your play, it kind of gives you a boost of confidence. I think it will kind of be the same with Jalen Brunson. When he's at the top of the key, he calls out a set. I think the guys will be very confident, confident that he'll make the right play. And just kind of to piggyback <clears throat> a little bit, on what uh, Seep said there. Sorry, I had to collect myself. Um, Jalen Brunson is an efficient player. Shot above 50% from the field. Shot above 37% from downtown. <clears throat> you can trust him to close games, and he's going to do it on an efficient level. He's going to be your closer now. R.J. Barrett is not. Uh, not R.J. Barrett. Julius Randle is not. I'd love to see R.J. Barrett become more of a closer, but it's going to be... It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be RJ and Jay when closing games. Hopefully not Leon Ro- uh, to Kings think straight. Julius Randle. Leon. But uh, yeah, th- I don't know where, where I'm going with this to be honest. Next question. Yeah. So Char- <laughs> Charles says we have the best offer unless they do a three team trade. That was something I was tra- trying to like just think about. Just if you look at the landscape of the NBA, is there another sleeper team? For Donovan Mitchell no. that we're not thinking of, I besides like maybe the Raptors. Yeah, like if the Raptors wanted to get involved, they, they could. could. Yeah, like but, you trade OG, Gary Trent, a couple first round picks, but it's like no one can offer as many first round picks as we can. And Charles is right in the shot. Uh, Charles, dude, I gotta compose myself. Charles is right on the money. The Jazz are not taking Julius Randle. Like, like that. That's that's not gonna happen. Tricky Nikki has me dead. Marshall, three sheets to the wind. It's been a long day, guys. It's been at work. Here we go. Tricky Nikki, let's talk Knicks. I actually love your guys' takes. I agree with Marshall. Spider coming up no matter what. But Leon Rose is the Don. Leon the Don. We did that in the show the other day, and you guys love that. Um... Leon Rose is too smart of a businessman to get fleeced. And so is Danny Ainge. And that's kind of where we're at. We have two master negotiators trying to come to a deal. If you thought this was going to happen in one day, you're fairly mistaken. But I do think this does happen. Because we have what they want. They have what we want. And when that happens, most likely, you're going to come to a deal. And you're going to come to an agreement. What the deal is, I don't know. But I do, I do think it does get done. That's just how I feel. Then Big L coming in, Jalen Brunson, inside stats are better than any other PG the Knicks have had. Yeah, I'm sure if you number put one, up. One, number one percentage in the league on floaters last year. Really? Number one in the league. That's impressive. I mean, that's, that's, that's very impressive. And plus, like, in the playoffs, shots are harder to get. A guy like Jalen Brunson, he already he showed it. the hoop, it's whoo, whoo. Yeah. The his, footwork's incredible. His, left hand, left hand, Brunson. Hey, Knicks fans, if you wanna if you wanna do something fun tonight, well, if you wanna kinda ride this Jalen Brunson hype train, go look up his highlights at Villanova. This man was a menace in the post. His footwork is insane. I mean Jalen Brunson, the way he works in the lane for a six foot guard, it's I mean, it's a sight to see. Um we got Webb here coming in with the starting lineup that I'm sure a ton of Knicks fans would love to see. Brunson, D. Mitch, R.J. Barrett, Obi Toppin, Mitch Robb. That's a hell of a lineup. We'd love to see it. I think Obi's going to be in the deal, though. I do. As much as I love to keep Obi, it sounds like he is going to be in the deal, man. Who do you think the Jazz would value more, Obi or Quentin Grimes? They want Grimes. They want Grimes. The reports are, per Tony Jones, even though he called me out on Twitter and then I called him out and I made him delete his tweet because he's a fraud. Um, everything that Tony Jones is saying, who's a beat reporter for The Athletic that covers the Utah Jazz, is known as one of the most tapped-in beat reporters. He said that the Knicks don't want to trade Grimes, the Jazz want Grimes, and the Jazz also want Toppin, and the Knicks are willing to trade Toppin. Those are the latest yeah. reports. Okay, that makes sense. So, Tricky Nicky, this... This is great. This is me kind of hopping in my NBA nerd fantasy. Is a 4-5 matchup in the Eastern Conference playoffs. If the Knicks trade for Donovan Mitchell, who wins, fellas? Brunson and Spida versus Murray and Trey. F. Trey Young. Yeah, F. Trey Young in the chat. Get it going in the chat. F. Trey Young in the chat. 
Oh man, I can't. That's a great, I can't, that's a great question. I can't lose to the, to the Hawks again. I can't. That's I a think great question. Jalen Brunson would bully Trey Young. Oh, uh, Jalen Brunson would bring him down to the post any time yep. he got. I mean, yep. it would be it would be a field day. And then and then people would say they just put Dejounte Murray on him. Then who's guarding R.J. Barrett? Yeah. And plus, I mean, Trey Young would get taken to school by Jalen Brunson. He can't guard him. He's too little. He, he's too little. Same height. He's too, no. He's got Jalen Brunson's Jaylen got the Brunson's shoulders got on him though. He's got the him, shoulders though. on him. Trey Young ain't a dog. <laughs> we got our Oklahoma guy, Sam, talking. He thinks he thinks Trey Young. Type F cooked. Sam <laughs> in the chat because he's over here hating on the Knicks. Type F Sam in the chat, and he's a Mavs fan. He's coming on stream. <laughs> He's coming on. He's coming. He's only like the fifth show to like here at Chat Sports to do that. This is like a. But we've done it before. This isn't a new thing. F Sam. Yeah. F Sam. F Sam. F Sam. F Sam. <laughs> He's a great sport. That's why it works. I need it. Some people love the hate. <laughs> Some people love the hate. Sam is a guy that builds off of hate. Sam. He almost just ran it. into a light, and that would have been awesome. <laughs> Omar says next we will see a bong. Uh, a beer bong? We have the equipment. $20 super chat and someone will hit a beer bong. Is anybody out there? Jonesy, who's out there? Uh, well, maybe not. $20 and Chase Sr., who said F the Knicks and F New York, said that he will take a shotgun. Fabian has a Great t-shirt idea. F Trey and F Richard Jefferson t-shirts. I guarantee you the F Trey t-shirts would they would they would sell out. They would sell I'm gonna out. take a picture of this, Fabian, and send it to my boss, and I'm gonna see what he says. That's so, hilarious. Also, Webb in the chat, he says, make Sam take a shot for being on Nick's live. It's on Sam power. You're getting called out. They said you're not. You're from Oklahoma and you're a Mavs fan, so you owe a shot. <laughs> he said. He said that he's soft and he doesn't want to. But since I'm a real one and we're almost three hours into this live stream, I'll take a shot. He's back. There he is. Right He's here. back. Oh, oh. From the dome. Oh. Into the dome. Type go Sam in the chat. Go Sam. Redeems Sam. Himself. Redeemed himself. Let's go. That's why it's not F Sam. It's no. go Sam. Yeah. Go Sam. Go no. Sam in the chat. Let's go. Give me more hate. Give more me hate. hate. <laughs> he lives off the hate. He lives off the hate. He also has to drive home. So And so I might have to as well. Some people are saying, go F, Sam. I don't know what that means. All right. You yeah, guys taking a shot of Grey Goose to that class. Grey Goose to the dome. Shout out Maurice Claret. It's goose time, if you know, you know. The real <laughs> ones, the real football fans will know what that means. <laughs> Quentin, go Sam. He ain't no herb. He ain't love no it. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Love it. My boss just said that F. Trey Young shirts are a great idea. Should we make F. Trey shirts? I think. Let me know in the chat. Would you buy an F. Trey shirt? Let me know in the chat. I think, I think we do it. So shirts just like this, instead of real one, it just says, oh, you guys can't see that. Just like this. Same design, it F just tray. says F tray. I think we do it, F tray. Do, would you guys buy a shirt that looked like this, Nick's font, Nick's logo, no Nick's logo. Nick's font, Nick's text, Nick's colors, F tray. Would you buy that shirt? We're not gonna make them if you guys don't buy them because then it's just a waste on our part. And I don't wanna pressure you into buying them. I'm trying to ask you, would you buy an F tray shirt? Let me know. He said, got to be bright orange. The shirt bright orange or keep it blue 
Same orange text with the out white outline of F tray. I'm out. Go Knicks. Do you want to give a sign off? Yeah. Knicks Nation, I love you. Tyler Jones has booted on three straight Knicks Live. What do you got to say to the people? Let's make it four in a row next week. Let's do it next week. Let's do it next week. Let's ride. Jonesy, thank you for being a great sport. Knicks Galaxy says, take my money. F Trey, please. I think we got to do it. I think we got to do F Trey. Marsh, I think Jamal describes it perfectly. F that bald. <laughs> I can't say oh, yeah, the F word. Wait, 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 yeah. We're okay. It's good to be on yeah, screen. It's good I, to I be on screen. <laughs> I just can't say it. F that ball, dude. Ooh, I'm hold down on. for that. That. Real ones on. say F Trey Young. That might be that's it. That's a good Mikey. idea, Mikey. Mikey, that might be it. Ooh, that's I like that. Like, I is like it that. real ones and then like two, like a two liner? Like a two liner? Like, how, Mikey, give me some more details. Yeah, but I like that. That's a great start, Mikey. I like that. That's a good idea, Mikey. I I owe you guys some more shots. Honestly. I really have nothing to do at home. I know Seeps has a girlfriend he might have to go talk to, but I'm in no rush to go home. But the bosses have told me. Oh, Oliver said he just bought a shirt at shot time. If you buy a shirt, I will give you a shot. That's, I mean, we probably sold 15 we sold real like ones t-shirts. Yeah. Unless they were capping. Yeah, I mean, they've been buying shirts all day. This is Knicks Nation showing up. Hey, Mikey is saying we should get a shirt that says Real One Say and then F Trey under it. I feel like I can make like a, sh a, a song. Real One Say, F Trey. Real One Say, F Trey. The bald piece. I like that, Mikey. I like that. Real One Say, F Trey. That's his final design. Jamal is saying they brought as many shirts as Marshall drank shits. I'm going to be honest, bro. You must be drinking with me because that makes no sense. <laughs> and Jamal, that's why you're a real one. Tricky Nikki says he, he loves actually, the real he one. He tried concept. to auto-correct it, and he said shits again. Clearly, he is drinking, and Jamal, a third time he got it. He said shots. <laughs> Jamal, that's Jamal, why you're a real it. one. He you got, got the shots it. now. You got it. Shot. Then he goes, shots, bro, shots. Shot, 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 shot. Let's ride. He said he's drinking the Henny. That's why you're Ooh. a freaking. I've had some bad experiences. Not bad, but I've been. Let me see if I can find this video real quick that I can play for you guys. Hold on. This is going to be hilarious. Henny, Henny takes you down. Uh, it does. It's a, it's a different type of drunk. Dude, it's, it's a hard drunk. Yeah. I've only if I had... can find this, this is going to be hilarious, and you guys are going to love it. Hold on. How long ago was this? This was when I turned, I think, 20. Hold on. Give me some time. Freak. I don't know if I have it. Oh, I found it. You guys are about to see some behind the scenes from Put Marsh Put me right full now. screen. Put me full screen. Can you all see this? Oh, let's ride. This is me back in 2019 at my birthday. We had a section. Super faded. Super. Oh, wait. That's. Oh, there it is. I mean, we missed it. We missed it. Hold on. This is me. 2019. No fake shit. Only real shit. Look at this. Hen dog straight from the bottle. Yeah. I was faded. Look at that. Faded. Rape my henny pour. Rate my henny pour in the comments. Jamal, do you respect me more that you've seen me now just straight pulling from the hen dog? Jamal says an eight. Jamal, you know I'm a real one. Dog. I'm in the club. Hey. Probably had some peace right here. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Jamal, I think I turned 23 or 24 in that video. We had a section downtown Dallas. It was lit. After that, we went to IHOP. I fell asleep at the table. I couldn't eat. I was so drunk, I could not eat. I fell asleep. Nick's Galaxy says eight. N Tricky Nikki says no beer belly there. Yeah, I was a lot skinnier there. That's a fact. 
He said, you got to take a seat with a henny drip that hard. Yeah, after that, you know what's bad? We were mixing tequila and henny, and we called that Patronacy. Patron and Hennessy as a mixture. Patronacy. My guy Chase Sr. heading out. Big L that he says Hennessy taught me that I should never drink it again. Jamal says he's sipping the Henny. Yeah, it's really only a sip. When you we literally used to call it Patronacy. Patron and Henny and mixed it. We were dumb kids. We were dumb kids. Yes, that's what we used to do. I don't know why we did that, but Jamal, that's behind the scenes right there. That's when I was a real one. I was skinny. I was in shape. I was running through these broads in Dallas. Now I work 55 hours a week, and I gained weight, and I'm not an athlete anymore, and I'm just kind of a loser. I'm just kidding. All right, it is 7.01. I'm going to do this. We got – I'm going to set an alarm. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri, wake me up. Ah, oh, damn it. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri, wake me up in 10 minutes. All right, we got an alarm set for 10 minutes. We will be answering questions for the next 10 minutes, and then we're going to get out of here, unless Super Chats roll in. As long as Supers continue to roll, we will stay and answer your questions. We've already been live for three hours. This is about to be a speed, Phone's speed round Phone's not of off. Questions. It's not off. I couldn't. I don't know what was going on. My laptop thought I was saying, hey, Siri. But it was my phone. Ten minutes. As many questions as you guys want, we'll answer them. And then we'll answer all the super chats that roll in that ten minutes. All right. Let's do it. All right. Double dog starting it off. Knicks can give up the picks, but not with both Grimes and OB. 100% right. It's pick one of those guys and then picks. If you're trading both of them, I'm only going to give you one unprotected first round pick. That's how I'm doing business. Yeah, and it kind of just goes down like you're giving up the farm for Donovan Mitchell. See, I would see I would give up Grimes and OB though. I think I'll if if, if How you many could, picks are you giving up then? I don't You <clears throat> if you have four of your own picks. Okay. That you can trade and then you have four picks from other teams that are protected, so they're not that valuable. Your own picks can be unprotected, which are the most valuable. So how many of those four unprotected picks are you trading on top of Grimes and Obi? I'd give them three. Three? Because, think, I mean, you're keeping quickly and RJ. Okay. Like, okay, notifi notification comes to your phone. Nick's trade for Donovan Mitchell. It's three of the unprotected and two of the protected picks. So five picks total, Grimes and Obi. I feel like you would be very happy. I feel like you would be very happy, Marsh. I would, but I don't want to give up both of those guys, man. I know, I yeah. know I'm, I'm being emotional and I'm letting – I said it, it earlier. Business is business. It's strictly financial. You don't involve biz, emotions in business, but – I'll throw this L3 up on the screen, the lower one right here. This was Marshall earlier. It was. He was saying, I can't said... mix emotions with business, and now Marshall's mixing emotions with business. I'm a loser, but I don't know if that's – Someone in the comments talk me through it. Would you do a deal? Three unprotected first round picks, Obi and Grimes, and let's say Evan Fournier for Donovan Mitchell. Would you make that trade? Obi, Grimes, Fournier, three unprotected first round picks, and two first round picks from the guys from Milwaukee and Washington that are super heavily protected. Would you make that deal? Let me know. Yeah, and then we got Jamal. Do you think Randall finishes the season as a Nick? Really, I mean, it just depends on this Donovan Mitchell thing. I think once we see that go, if, if Mitchell comes 100%, I think he's off the Knicks by the end of the year. I just don't think it would work with, you know, there's too many ball-dominant guys in that lineup. But right now, who knows? Who knows? Uh, we got RC. We'll f transfer to him. He said, DM is proven and draws more talent than all of our picks. Anyhow, KD can't pass if Donovan Mitchell is here. MSG deserves a real one. Uh, I don't know what you're mentioning with Kevin yeah, Durant. Is he KD would want to come? We don't want him. Oh, KD can't pass? Is he saying KD can't pass on the Knicks if Donovan Mitchell is here? Oh, uh, okay. I see what he's saying. Okay. That's it. You know what? I mean, it would definitely be it would definitely be more of an attraction to Kevin Durant. 
if Donovan Mitchell's here, obviously. Pro Canon Gaming says you need to add one more player to make that deal work. So you need to get up to $24 million to make a Donovan Mitchell trade happen. Evan Fournier is $18 million. I think Obi is like four or three, and then Grimes is like one or two. So that's six, seven, 18. You're right around 22, 23. Maybe you throw in a guy like Deuce McBride or maybe Trevor Keels, someone like that to even out the money. But I think I think actually Fournier, Toppin, and Grimes gets the money done right, actually. I think it does. I actually, I like this question. Trick and Nicky, there should be emotions mixed with business. If you're running a good culture, Yay or nay? I okay. say nay because you know why? Who's the best team in the best culture in the NBA? It's the Golden State Warriors. They won 73 games and were coming off a title. And they let Harrison Barnes go, yeah. a player that was a key piece in that, and they went and added Kevin Durant. No, no emotions right there. They did a move that was going to make them better. And They've traded Andre Iguodala. Like, you, don't, you can't think emotions, man. You have to think broad-eyed view. Emotions out of it. That's how I think business has to be done. And plus, I don't think there's many. I mean, Knicks fans, you can disagree with me, but you guys don't really have any, like, besides R.J. Barrett, I think, you guys don't really have no guys that you can, like, really dig your nails into. Like, I feel like there's no, like, New York Nick player that's on the roster where you're like, that guy embodies being a New York Nick yet. So I think right now, you know, when it comes to running a good culture, I don't know. I feel like... I don't know. That's a that's a tough question. Like, do you keep like the fan favorites to keep the fans happy? Like, I feel like there has to be a balance. Like, if you're keeping guys that are fan favorites, they still have to be able to contribute. And tricky Nicky, we'll just go to this one. They traded they traded Andre Iguodala. And plus, I think he's thinking of the fan favorites as like guys like Curry and Draymond and Clay. That's that was their core. Iggy was that was a their Finals MVP. Yeah, Iggy was a Finals MVP. He was still a favorite. And obviously, they're not going to trade Curry, Clay, or Draymond yeah. after that. I mean, that was their nucleus. Just like how I don't think the Knicks will trade Brunson, RJ, or who would be like your third? Mitchell Robinson, probably. Like, but I think you still can move off guys like quickly Grimes, Obi, probably not. I think Grimes has a little New York in him. You Defense, think? grit. And doesn't have an ego, it seems doesn't like. Doesn't have an ego. Like, I think Grimes is the real deal. And I, I think I'm more hesitant to trade Grimes than Obi. I really am. Webb's on you right now, Marsh. And a trade you got to give to get, man. It really is. I'd hate to see Donovan Mitchell go, or uh, Obi Toppin go. I'd hate to see Quentin Grimes go. But you know what also I'm going to be doing? I'm going to be parading on this show once Donovan Mitchell drops a 50 ball in Madison Square Garden. I loved Wilson Chandler. I loved Danilo Gallinari. I loved Timofey Mozgov. I would do that Carmelo Anthony trade every single day of the week. It's not the trade that messed you up. It's not amnestying Armari Stoudemire. His knee injuries messed you up. That's what messed you up. So, here, I'm at Marshall, I'll ask you this. IQ or Grimes? Just straight up. I want would Grimes. You, you, would, you would take Grimes over IQ? Yeah, because I think Grimes is the 3 and D player you want going forward. I, I think he could play alongside Brunson, Mitchell, and RJ. I think you could do all four of them on the court with a center. Yeah. Andrew, a comment just came in. Just got home. Switch you off to the big screen. This dude's going from the car on the car play, gets home, puts it on the main screen. I, fire me up. Inject. Nobody, nobody's here right now, Marsh, right? It's literally just us two it's in the office. It's just us two. We're just grinding here for you guys. It's, it's literally us two. We got three minutes left. All questions and super chats. We are $30, $40 away from beating last week's stream in Supers. I'd like to get there so I can kind of flex on my boss a little bit, but I understand if no one's, no one's willing to. Um, oh, this is awesome. Here we go. Tricky Nicky giving, giving us a way in of his own. Best Nick show I've seen in a while. Chat, do you agree? Type Y for S, type N for no. He's Let us know, chat. One. Let us know. Spam us know. it in the chat. Let me know what you guys think we could do better. Because there's only 165 people watching right now. And it's literally just the real ones at this point. So I want to know what you guys would like to see us do more of, less of, things you think we could do better. Let me know what you think. We're seeing some whys in the Ooh. chat. That's what's up. That's, that's, that's pretty cool, man. Like, it, 
I, dude, I grew up a Knicks fan. Like, it's in my blood. I was born in New York, moved to Houston because my family moved, raised a Knicks fan, raised by a New Yorker of 35 years. I had to live in Houston. Growing up with Rockets fans as my friends, as a Knicks fan, and I had to take shit from them every single day of the week. I didn't, I didn't twist. I didn't change. I stayed a Knicks fan, and now I get to talk about them at work every single day for a living that pays my bills. It's incredible, and the only reason I can do that is because of people like Tricky Nicky, like Hey Mikey, like Derek, like Big Sir, like Oliver, like Nathaniel, like Andrew, like Big L, like Stolen Harley, like Ron, like Webb. People like you guys that tune in every single week, y'all make this show possible. Y'all guys, y'all guys make my dream possible, man. It's really, it's awesome. Got this one from Hey Mikey. He said, Obi loves New York. He says he's more New York than Grimes. He's humble AF, and he's a sponge when it comes to learning and wanting to get better. I like Grimes, but I wouldn't pick him over Obi. Obi is New York, born and raised in New York, grew up a Knicks fan, so I get that. I just do like that was the alarm. Um, I just, like, who is more likely to reach their ceiling, OB or Quentin Grimes? What is OB's ceiling? That's a good I, question. I, like, what I don't, is OB's ceiling? Who's a comp for, o, like, OB hits his full potential. Who's his comp Who in the NBA? He? He's kind of, like, he's different. He's like a unicorn. He, that's, a, that's interesting. Tricky Nicky, he's out. Appreciate you, bro. You're a real one. Yep. Team Money says, hey, what's up? Correction, Marshall. It was a greedy Carmelo that couldn't wait to get the bag. I don't really know if that makes sense. He was greedy in the sense that he didn't want to wait to get to New York. I don't know if he was greedy in the sense that he wanted that bag. He was getting that bag wherever he went. I don't blame a guy. He was not happy in, in Denver. and He said, get me out of here. Did the Knicks overpay a little bit? Sure, but that's not why the Knicks weren't elite, in which they were for a couple of years. Second seed in the East, got out of the first round of the playoffs. They beat the Indiana Pacers if Amari Stoudemire doesn't hurt himself. I truly believe that. And they get to the Western Eastern Conference Finals. I think it's the moves that were made after Carmelo. Like, I think trading for Tyson Chandler was dumb. I think not amnestying Amari Stoudemire was dumb. Not uh, tr Trading for uh, the Canadian dude from the Raptors, Andrea Bargnani, and he gave up a first-round pick, that was dumb. A lot of dumb moves happened after the Carmelo Anthony trade. Yeah, and we got this one from Michael. He's talking about Cam Reddish. Play Cam and see what he has. I would like to see what type of player he is. What do we have to lose? See, I think the what do we have to lose is if the Knicks trade for Donovan Mitchell and Cam Reddish is still on the roster, I yes, you can throw him in in the regular season to see like, what he can turn into. But I think like the what you have to lose is like, I, I mean, I, I guess I'm kind of getting tripped up on my words. I get I get what you're saying with like Cam Reddish. You kind of want to just throw him out there into the jungle and kind of see what he can turn into. But I also think Cam, he's been in the league a little bit, and if he's not going to embrace that role player role, yeah. like a guy like Quentin Grimes or Quentin Grimes, he's fine with getting eight shots a game, sitting there three and D. I don't know if Cam Reddish if that's in his game. No, I think Cam wants to be a guy on a bigger role on a team. That's why he asked to be traded from the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah, he wasn't getting minutes. Yeah, he got beat out by Herder and Hunter, and he probably thought he was better than them, but he hasn't proved it yet. Like, I, we all know Cam has the potential. Like, we know what he can do. It's just like, at some point, he's got to be a little bit better. So we were asking for comps in the chat, and we got a couple. A lot of, people guys, a lot of you guys are saying Kenyon Martin vibes. I don't know if Obi is a defensive monster like a guy like Kenyon Martin. I almost see like I see him almost like an Amari Stoudemire almost, like an Obi Toppin, like like a four that can stretch the floor a little bit, a better shooter than Amari. I think Obi to take that next step needs to become a stronger player, like actually get stronger and work out and improve his handle. And that's where I think Obi could take another step. Obi also, he runs the floor really well. He was, he was doing that in Dayton. Yeah. I remember he's a great lob threat on the fast break, great slasher. So, yeah, I, I can kind of see Kenyon Martin vibes, but Kenyon Martin was a dog defensively. I've so. seen some people say Stromile Swift like that. I get that a little bit, but I don't know. All righty. 
We're about to sign off here. We've been live for three hours and 15 minutes. I will do this. I know you guys want us to stay live, but we have, we have lives. In the next minute, next minute, any super chats that get sent in the next minute, we will answer. If no super chats come in in the next minute, we got to bounce up on out of here. Uh, it could be a $1 super. can be $2, no price. Just if you have a question at this point, we're three and a half hours in. Send a super. We'll stay live. If not, we're going to bounce on out of here. 30 seconds. And so we're going to leave. I'll put you on the spot right here. Super LT says, who is the best Knicks player ever? Frazier. Walt Clyde Frazier. Two rings. Um, I obviously didn't get to see him play. Wasn't that old. Um, someone that I've seen play. I mean, I got to see Patrick Ewing a little bit. Was still really young. Uh, I know he's a fan favorite. Best player I have seen in my life, though, play for the New York Knicks. It's either Allen Houston or Carmelo Anthony. That, that's that's as, as honest as I can be. I know a lot of people like Bernard King. I know people like Walt. I know people like Pat. I know people like Larry Johnson. I know people like Spree. I know they like Allen Houston. The Mello's up there just talent-wise. Maybe not resume-wise with the Knicks, but talent-wise, Carmelo Anthony is over there. Up there for sure. Bernard King, yeah, he's up there. Big L, I really didn't get to see him play. But that's it. The timer's out. Unless we get a super chat in the next 10 minutes. Let's do a Twitter read if we can. And then I'm going to get out of here. I don't know if all you guys are following me on social media. If you're not, give me a follow. It's in the chat. Just click the link. Give me a follow. I'll follow you back. And I will give you a shout out on the show. I'm going to check my Twitter. I'm going to see if any of you guys have followed me. Yeah, yeah, the lights have turned out in the studio. Akandi just gave you a follow. I'm actually your first follow. Oh, $5 super chat. $5 super chat from Quentin Gilman. He says, what if we trade OB or Grimes and they pops to an all-star? We played ourselves and Leon's got to go. But what if Donovan Mitchell is an all-pro or, or an all-NBA type player and you get to the Eastern Conference Finals? Like, I think it all depends. Like, yeah, we'd hate it to see Obi Toppin get traded and he become an all-star. We'd hate it to see Quentin Grimes get traded and become an all-star. I would not be surprised if either of them do. But the question is, could they with the New York Knicks? I think that's the question. If you get Donovan Mitchell and you have a starting five of Jalen Brunson, Donovan Mitchell, R.J. Barrett, X, whoever X is at power forward, alongside Mitchell Robinson, and you're playing in the second and third round of the playoffs, Hey, Quentin, I'll throw this back on you. Do you think the Lakers are upset that Brandon Ingram developed into a star even though they got a ring out of Anthony Davis? Totally two different situations, but still. I mean, I know Lakers fans, you know, Mickey Mouse ring, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure they're not there thinking like, oh, damn, like, I'm, I wish you had B.I. when you have Anthony Davis. Great point, Pat. I mean, the, 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 the Lakers would do that trade over and over again because they got him a ring. It got him Anthony Davis. Yeah, it sucked to see Lonzo go. It sucked to see uh, Brandon Ingram grow. It, and they traded Josh Hart. Like, they gave up a lot to get Anthony Davis. But it got him a ring. And I think I think it's worth it at that point. Donovan Mitchell brings you a ring to Madison Square Garden. I don't give a shit what Quentin Grimes and Obi Toppin do for another team. Because they got the Knicks a ring. Good question, Quentin. Great question. But that's gonna do us do it. Uh, that that that's gonna do it. <laughs> Oliver, I just gave oh another super from Matthew Peterson. That is freaking hilarious. He says, "Pick Shea and I's dinner: Buffalo Wild Wings, Chipotle, no more beer." Um, I would say Buffalo Wild Wings because we got Chipotle two days ago at work. It is not Tuesday or Wednesday, and that's the day to go to B Dubs. What about cutie pies, Petey? What about cutie pies? I'd go B-dubs, though. Some boneless wings sound kind of heat from B-dubs. Petey, tell Shay I think Nick and Sam's is a great choice. I also <laughs> think Nick and Sam's is a good choice, Petey. I also think Nick and Sam's is a good choice. 
from Petey to Nick's Galaxy to Andrew, Jay Deals, Jamal, T, Quentin, everybody that has super chatted, everybody that has shown love today, I appreciate you. Petey is laughing in the chat. That was a great remark, Seeps. We are about to get out of here. I can just close it. Michael, I just gave you a follow back. Ob one, I just gave you a follow back. Everybody that follows me from today's show, I will follow you back. Link is in the chat. Until then, I'm going to drink the rest of this, and we'll see you later on the next Knicks Now. Let's see what happens. Hold on, hold on. Are we live? Are we back? Are we back? We're back. We got another super. We're back. We're not leaving until the supers are done. Quentin dropped another super chat. Wow. At the buzzer. Is it gone? Is it in there? Go. Oh, he beat the buzzer. Quentin at the buzzer. Pull up. Three. Bang. He got it in there. He said it's his picks too. Not just the players. 100%. Right, we've talked about on the show, it's a sliding scale. If I'm giving up Obi and Quentin Grimes, I'm not giving up a lot of picks. I'm really not. Like, I think those are two players that have potential to be really, really good, Quentin. And if I'm going to give them up, I'm not giving up as many picks as I need to. If I give up Obi and Quentin, I'm not giving up a lot of picks. If I give up only one, I'll give up more picks. That's how I think about it. Oh, in another super chat. Look, guys, if you guys continue to super, we will continue to stay live. I will say this, though. We are at $344 in super chats, which means we are now $30 away from beating last week's record. If we get a $30 super chat, we'll ride. I'll, I might have to go crack open another one. Um, wow. Web. If you have a question, Webb, please ask it in the comments. We'll pop it up on screen. Thank you for the $5 super chat. He said, y'all ain't going nowhere tonight. If you guys keep on throwing in soups, we'll, we'll, we'll stay. Tricky is back as well. Tricky Nick said he was out, and now he's back. Webb, please ask a question. I need to answer it. I don't just want to stare at you not asking a question because I don't think that's fair. Please ask a question, Webb, and I will answer it. Brightest future says later, fellas. Thing is, I thought we were getting out of here as well. And then Quentin Gilman in web said not so much. You guys have supers to answer. Y'all ain't going nowhere tonight. Thing is, you might be right. That one's done. And I'm going to do a shot for Quentin and Webb because they kept the show going. Electro Knight says, what's good, Nicks? Let's get this live. Well, Electro, you're kind of coming in at a bad time because uh, we've been live already for three hours and 24 minutes. We're actually coming to a close. But we will stay live for all Super Chats because we've already been live for three and a half hours. And at this point, I'm pretty drunk. So, But for Webb and for Gilman... I'm dead. These guys need a doctor on set. Holy shit. Yeah, um, I'm definitely going to have to chill out a little bit before I head home, sober up a little bit. But I think we'll be okay because we're real ones, and real ones never fold. Electro says, LOL, I didn't know. Electro, we can keep it live. We can stay live. Thing is, it's it's got to be you guys have to drive the ship at this point because we're out of graphics. We're out of content. We're out of stuff for today. You got to send in a super chat if we want the things to go on. Webb asked a question. Thank you, Webb. He said, what's your thoughts on Randall? Is he still going to be traded? I only think he gets traded before the season if the Knicks trade for Donovan Mitchell. If the Knicks trade for Mitchell, then I do think Julius Randall will be traded. I don't think the Knicks have any ideas or plans to have $20 million Jalen Brunson, $30 million R.J. Barrett, whatever you pay him, 20 or 25, whatever it is. Another $25 million 
and Julius Randle, and another $30 million in Donovan Mitchell, and another $15 million in uh, Mitchell, Don, uh, Mitchell Robinson. So $15 million in Robinson, $30 million in Randle, $30 million in Mitchell Donovan, and then twenty five. With Randall, uh, RJ and 25 and Brunson, I keep on freaking stumbling my words. But I don't think that they want to pay that hefty of a salary. And the Knicks want to stay flexible for the summer of 2025 when the salary cap is going to the moon. The cap is expected to go up $40 million between the summer of 2024 and the summer of 2025. The last time we've seen that was when the Golden State Warriors signed Kevin Durant when they won 73 games the prior year. The Knicks, they're gearing up for summer of 2025. The idea is to have Mitchell, Brunson, and RJ, and then go sign that third big star in 2025. Tricky Nikki says, someone, if I had the money right now, I would don't, don't even say that, Tricky Nikki. I don't want you to feel like that. Super chat questions, please, might buy us 20 minutes. Who knows? Thank you. He said, is Google Pay accepted here? I don't really know how the Super Chat function works. Do you, Seeps? Can you Google Pay? I got Venmo. I got, I got Apple, uh, Google, uh, Apple Pay. I got, I got Cash App. I don't know if I have Apple or Google Pay. I don't know if I've ever even heard of Google Pay. Seeps, can you keep them? I, I got to run in the restroom as well. Seeps is going to answer questions for you guys. I'll be back in less than 10 seconds. I'll keep you guys entertained while Marsh has to go. Uh, I mean, he's been up here for three hours drinking. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, Marsh has been out here live for about three hours, chopping it up, talking Knicks, and it's been a good time. Honestly, these Knicks lives, they have been some of the most fun lives that I've been a part of here at Chat Sports. And hey, and then the best part about the lives, we just get to chop it up talk Knicks on the back end. Uh, tricky, I don't know. I don't know if Google Pay is accepted here. Um, here, we'll just start taking you guys questions from the comments while Marsha goes. We got Electro Knight. He says, I'm not going to lie, RJ Barrett is in his prime right now. So if you guys have been watching the streams the past couple shows, I'm a huge RJ guy. I'm a huge fan of him. Um, see, Electro, I, I don't think he's, I think he's nearing his prime I don't think he's in it right now I always felt like RJ was the guy that just got overshadowed by Zion you know they 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 both committed the Duke at around the same time Zion you know with his highlights and everything in high school he was obviously the more talked about um recruit and then player at Duke and I feel like RJ even the NBA he's been more consistent he's played more he's shown more but people still talk about Zion more and I think he's still getting overshadowed by him but I, don't, I, I really don't think he's in his prime right now. I think he'll enter his prime. I mean, think about it. He's 22 right now, which is the same age I am. If you give him three more off-seasons to just work on his catch-and-shoot three, three more off-seasons to improve him at the th uh, free-throw line, I think that, that would be his prime. When he's entering like his year, would it be six and seven? When he's 24, 25, I think that could be his prime. All right, here we go. We got Tricky Nicky. Yeah, RJ. Yeah, like I was saying, RJ is about to enter his prime. Is in three years, he's only 22. I, yeah, that's 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 exactly what I was saying. I mean, you think about how young 22 is in the NBA. I mean, Bron is about to turn, or I think he's 37, 38 right now, entering year 20. I mean, just the way kind of just um, everything is going with like health and everything in this company um or in this country sorry marsh just walked in with a fun game um that i think just players will start playing longer and i think it will be um where rj can hit his prime nearing age 25. Sorry, yeah nowhere near his prime web totally we got sex bots in the chat right now type b everybody spam b blocks the bots it gets them out of here it helps us out big time yeah damn spam yeah get them out of here Block the spammer. Yep, luck charm. Spam B. Yeah, Jamal says RJ about to do big numbers soon. I agree. You know, you look at what he did last year with last 42 games. That's actually a stat we have. I'll throw that up on the screen. But RJ, I 
I, I think he's fantastic. And I think what he's been able to do with the New York pressure kind of on him, you know, it's not easy playing at MSG every night. And if you look at his last 42 games uh, this past season, playing 37 a game, he was averaging 23.6 points per game, 3.5 assists per game. And I know a lot of fans, they get on the 41.4 field goal percentage, the 34.5 three-point percentage. But, hey, his usage rate, he was 24th in the NBA last season in usage rate. 24th, which means, if you guys don't understand, it means he handled the ball the 24th most amount in the NBA. And he was also the youngest player out of the top 25. So I do think RJ could be, could be entering his prime very soon. Can we push it right now? Yeah, we got some we got some games getting set up. You guys we got are seeing some games, some guys, because I know you guys talked about you didn't want us to get out of here. Actually, give me one second. Seeps, can you on my laptop just click over here so we can uh, play some games and I can still have some eyes on the chat? Yeah. You gotta pull it up. Just go on that side, and then we're clearing the game field. We got some games, cause look, what we do here at Knicks now. We got games. We talk Knicks. What do you want me to go? Right, you're doing video analytics. Ah, uh, click uh, create. Hold on, work. We're working out. Go live. Yep. And then click here. Cool. We're good. All right. We got the chat. We got games. Me and my boy Seeps will play some games. How far does the mic reach? Does it reach for you? I think we got, I think we got enough here. Can you guys still see Seeps in the chat? And can you hear Patrick Seatman? We all good. We're getting We're some good? makeshift setup going on right That's now. That's right. Let's play some games. Oh, wait. Do, do we have the... We do have it. It's, the it's, mover? It's, it's yeah, I'll go there. grab it. Go I'll go grab it. it. So the name of the game is you got to you gotta get the hook on the ring. And it's, it's, it's like that. See, you got to get buckets like that. And that's, that's kind of where, where we're going to play. So let's play 330 likes, $344 in Super Chats. We're $30 away from beating last week's record on the channel. And I want to beat it. So stay right there, Steve. I'm going to... Pretty solid. That's, you, you see some stuff in the back, but this look good, guys. Is, is yeah. this all right for being guys, out little, live three and a half hours? Yeah, a little behind the scenes. A little behind the scenes. We'll play a game. So it works like this: you got to move, and then off the table in okay? a row. So if I get this one, it'll move it on that yes. side, and then if Marsh responds, he sends it back my way. Let me know who you got. Type M for Marsh. Type P for Pat. Let's ride. M for Marsh, P for Pat. Loser has to take a shot. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We're also, remember, $30 away from beating last week's Super Chat. Let's ride. Are we ready? All right, let's do this. Here we go. Three, two, two one. one. This is, this is, it's this not is an tough. easy game. No, like, it's we're, not. We're probably looking like rookies here, but it's all about the flick of the wrist. It's like you're shooting a corner three. That's one for me. Boom. I'm going to get you gotta smoked here. It. And then you just got to get it back on there. It's all about the flick of the wrist. Look at that flick of that wrist. Oh, I feel like I'm... Oh, oh that's two. One more if I get it. You're moving it the wrong way. You got to send it to me. Wait, send it so to me. Here. I'm here. I'm on that side. Let's ride. Here we go. Oh, my God. Who you got? M for Marsh. Yep, P we're for back. Pat. I found it. I saw my first shot go in. That's one. <laughs> Let's ride. One more and I yep, don't know. we're back. He's back. Oh my god, this is so tough. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh. One more. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, ah, no. Come Bang. on. Marshall Green for three. We'll pour one up. Bang. Let's go. You guys doubted me. I heard it. I hear <laughs> all the haters. I hear the haters in the chat. Let's ride. That's tough. 
Carl is rooting for Pat know, over me. Man. That kind of hurts. Carl, a little bit, I'm Carl. sorry. He I'm says sorry. The I let ninja, you down. Ninja all day. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, run. Carl. I let you Let's down. Let's run. Marsh with the dub. West side. West side. Let's ride. Carl, this is for you. Carl, this is, you. This is for you. Let's ride. Tastes like Christmas. Rex Fireball Reed says Jalen Brunson, although the New York Knicks lost the game, scored. Uh, let's not let's not overreact to a pro am game. Wait, yeah, so that's what people are. So the Knicks played in a pro am game. It was Brunson, it was Randall, and it was Ob Toppin, uh -huh. and they lost. They lost to some amateurs. But what what do you think of that, Seeps? I mean, yeah, think you think Brunson, Ob, and all of them are giving their full effort in a game like this? Like to the other guys, they're playing. That's their NBA championship. That's like the biggest moment of their careers because a lot of these guys are former D1 guys. Like a couple, it was about two weeks ago when LeBron played in that Pro-Am game. That was probably the coolest moment of a lot of those guys' lives. I mean, that was like, so you got to think, these guys are playing against NBA guys. They're wanting to show out. But, I mean, they did lose by 13. They lost by 13. But... I ain't going for a rebound hard if I'm no. Julius Randle, no. if I'm Jalen Brunson, if I'm Obi, I'm not going for loose balls, and that's what the other guys were doing. They were playing like their season was on the line, yeah. and this was just a lifetime run, a 24-hour fitness, uh, a L.A. fitness run for R.J. And you're right, Carl. Randle looked really in shape. He looked really, really thin. Yeah, and that's um, and that's promising for Knicks fans. Like if Carl, I mean, if Carl, if Julius Randle. Gets back in shape. Gets. I mean, it could be an indicator right there. Yeah. Let's go again. We'll yeah, go best go two out of three. Best, best two, two out, of, out three. of three. Every loser, you take a shot. Can you yeah. guys still see? Yeah, they can still see us from here. Yeah. Let's ride. All right. Three, two, one. Type M for Marsh. Type P for Pat. We're starting <laughs> hot. Both of us are starting hot. Oh. oh no. No. Let's ride. No. <laughs> Let's ride. It's all about the wrist. Yep. It's all it's about, all the, about wrist. the wrist. Yup. It's two in a row. Three in a row for game. Three in a row for game. Oh, Let's me. go. He got me. Let's go. He got me. Pour, bring the yeah. shot over here. Do you, can you take it out of this? I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> I think that's probably the game. Is that the game you take it? Carl it's, can't bail on Pat. That's my guy. He, he, he saw the vision. Carl, he saw the vision. Carl, I am salty that you are rolling with Pat and not me. It's three in a Honestly, row. Honestly, Pat got three in super a row. hot. He looked like Melo versus the Bulls on Easter back in 2012. Remember that? Yeah, I do remember When he that. hit the game tire at the when buzzer he, and then the game winner. He pulls up, hezzy with the right. <laughs> Come there. It was nasty. I, it, that was a gross. And the best part about that, Knicks are down to, there's like 11 seconds still on the shot yep. clock. He said, I don't care. Epic. I got my match. Melo for yeah. three. Let's uh, ride. That, right. was, uh, that was my three-point celebration pop back in the day. There. You were a three to the dome guy? I, I love the three to the dome. Just three. giving that casually in high school, people love that. Did you know that Rasheed Wallace was actually the inventor of the three to the dome? It wasn't Mello. It's when Rasheed came to the that. Knicks that year. When it was Rasheed, Kurt Thomas, uh, Ron Artest, I think, was also on that team. It was a crazy. Wow. Let's look at the chat. As yeah. a Knicks fan, game three, I am typing M. Game three on the line. We're at home. We're in Madison Square Garden. I need the fans to be loud. M for Marsh, P for Pat. Let me know who Game you're rocking three. with. Gary Gastons, your, your chat got blocked because you dropped the F-bomb, but we'll read it off. He says, yo, Marsh, I F with you, bro. Giants, Knicks, Yankees, my guy. Good man. That's a good, good man. man. This one is for game three, the finals. We're playing best of three. It's nerve. Nerves are setting in right now. Who are you rocking with? Type M for Marsh, Game P for three. Pat. I'm nervous. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. It's because I can't. I'm on the road right now. I'm coming on the road he in the MSG. He's on the road. All right. Are we All right, ready? ready? Three, two, one. Oh, oh no rip. way. Off the rip. I pulled up from 30. I pulled up from 30 off the rip, and he said, so did I. M for Marsh, oh. P for Pat. Let me know who you're rocking with. I'm feeling oh, good. No. I'm catching fire. I might make another one. Oh, no. Four, three, bang, bang. Green from the corner. Let's go. Oh, my God. Let's freaking go. Damn. 
Dude, you looked like Trey Young in MSG right wow. there. Wow. Oh. Type F Pat <laughs> in the chat. F Pat in the chat. F Trey Young. F Pat. F Sam. F Michael Wilson. <laughs> F RJ Barrett. They are the and F Mark Cuban. Those are the official haters of the Knicks. Gary, no problem for saying the F bomb. I don't care. It's just that the YouTube yeah. algorithm will block it and people can't see it. F everybody. F everybody. Rolls everybody. The club. Uh, everybody. Everybody. Can't eat, can't sleep, for uh, everybody. <laughs> yeah, tricky. That, that, that hurt I'm my sorry. heart a little bit. Was that was was that crossing the line, Knicks fans? Are you guys still a little too sensitive to hear the it's, Trey it's Young? It's Trey Young. <laughs> Screw Trey Young, dude. That's honestly. the that's the best New York video of all time. It is the Knicks. They smoking beat, on that Trey Young pack. <laughs> they beat the Boston Celtics fans after the game, screaming "F Trey Young." That's why best Knicks part, fans yeah. are the freaking best, bro. Best part. Jamal's calling him Trish Young. Trish that is Young. hilarious. Hey, F. Oh, wow, what was the T-shirt? Real one say F. Trey. Real one say New T-shirt F-tray. idea. Real one say F. Trey. That'd be good. Let's F- ride. Yep, F. R. J. Too, Fabian. Definitely. R. J. is in R. J. Richard Jefferson, not R. J. Bear. Let's get that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's make sure that's fact. All righty. I think it might be time. Yeah. All right, it's 7.42 Dallas time, 8.42 New York time. We've been live since 5 New York time and 4 Texas time. Carl says I need Need to hear hear. Marshall KD rant. I I don't have that in me right now. Electro, the only way I can stay live for much longer because of how hungry I am, um, uh, I'm kind of drunk. Like, we got to keep the soups rolling. That, that's just what it is at this point. I literally just got a message from my boss that said, yo, you guys need to get home. If the soups don't roll in, you guys got to go. We'll, be lot, we'll, we'll do more videos tomorrow. And I get that. But I tell them, you know what? We'll stay live a little bit longer. But I need you guys. We've got to soup a little bit. Yeah. And also, you guys can start getting excited for the next Knicks Live. Because the next Knicks Live... We got some stuff planned. Yeah, next Knicks Live might be a night live. We're like, we don't Ooh. go live until like 7. That would be, that'd be fun. That'd be a, ni- that'd be a, a good night idea. Do you guys think we should do like Knicks post-game shows? Or like, what, 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 I don't really, I know CP does that. I know Knicks Film School does that. And I don't want <clears> to <throat> have to make you guys choose, but we've talked about it. Knicks post-game shows. What do y'all think? I mean, we got a lot of F the drinks, F Danny, F Danny, yeah. F Utah and Danny. When's the next live? Electro, TBD. Maybe next Thursday. I think it might be next Thursday. Maybe next Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to have to stay late to do it. Stay late after work because football season is officially back. And we're going to be going live uh, show. for preseason games for the Giants. I also run our Giants channel. So we'll be doing that. Um, Yeah. But we'll play one more game just for fun. Yeah. Loser takes a shot. I, I am sweating at this point. I just it's won been a game long day. seven. I just, Jamal, I just won game seven, I dude. Know. Like that's how could I not be sweating? It was that important to me. It's I did intense. it. I did it for y'all. I didn't do it for me. New York Knicks now real ones! This is for you. <laughs> Even though it's FKG. Yeah. Shout out to all the people who bought a t-shirt today. That was that was awesome Shout for a little out, bit. If you guys actually bought t-shirts, I'll know because we get to check the metrics. We'll know. We'll run one more game. One more game for all the marbles. For all the marbles, even though I already won. Yeah. Loser has to take two shots on this one. Yeah. Did you already take your shot for the L out shot. of this one? All right. Yeah. Two shots for the L, and then if Super Chats come in during the game, we'll answer those, and then we got to go. It, it, it's, just, it's just a fact of life. All right. All righty, let's count it Ready? down. Type P for Pat, type M for Marsh. We will answer all super chats that come in during the game. If not, we're going to bounce on out of here. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Oh, off the rim. Off the rim again. Oh, that's a bucket. Oh, my that's God. That's a bucket. That was a rim Kick and, and pop. Off. We're back. He's back. Seeps answers. Oh, another one. We're oh, back. my God. It's oh. back and forth. I, is it about? Oh, there we go again. I think I'm kind of getting the wrist. Look at that figure, that wrist. Look at that, look at, oh, that's another one. That's another one. Call, call got, me ah. Allen Houston versus the Heat. That's another one. We're getting one. better at this, though. We are getting much better. 
Oh my oh, god. Oh no. I'm getting hot. Green! No. For three! Oh! No. Green! For three! Green! Yep. For oh. Oh, I can't say it. You can only say it when, when the game winner's on the line, like it is right now. Green! For three! Come on, Green! Dude. For three! Green! For three! Oh! That was good! Is it same time? No, I think you... We'll go Ooh. same time. Yeah, 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 right here still. Yeah, right there. No, no, right here. If it was same time, because okay, we'll you answer. Same, yeah, answer. Same time. Was that, that was close. Same time. That was close. I think that was same time. We'll call it. We'll call it same time. All right, right ready? Three, set, two, go. One. Oh, <laughs> green for three. Green Come for on, three. Man. Go. Let's go. Bring it home. Winners don't fold. Winners don't fold. Green for three. Bang! Oh. Three to the top. Three to GGs. The yeah, that was a hell of a game. That was a that blast. was a hell of a game. That was a blast. That game is exciting. Shout out Craggy Games. Shout out Craggy Games. Uh, that's it. That's that that's that's it. That we gotta go. Alrighty. Yeah. If you haven't yet subscribed, we'll do more videos going forward. Uh, hit me up on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore to get a soup in before Seeps gets back to his desk. We'll answer it. Stupid. But until then, Seeps just pounded two shots. I'll take a shot as well for good faith because I love you guys. You guys support me. That's one thing I've always stood on. You support me, I'll support you. And Knicks fans have been supporting me. That's right. All righty. Peace, brothers. See you next week. Let's rock.